Uh, well, Jason, that was about the funniest story I've ever heard. And <laughs> if anyone missed it, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, f- sorry, folks. I was just saying when I thought we were live that there's going to be technological difficulties because this is the first live stream I've done in YouTube. I've done Twitch, but uh, this is all new to us. And uh, I think it's only fitting that Jason's here and there's uh, some kind of audio or visual problems. So. There has to be. Yep. Uh, well, welcome anyways. Thank you for your patience as we got everything sorted out. I could really use a drink. Yeah, that's why you're here tonight. This is the very first episode. Very fitting. Yeah, it is. Very first episode of History Off the Table. Tonight we're doing Tiki Off the Table with Jason. Jason from Advanced After Combat. How's it going, bud? Doing well, you? Mm. Better now that we're up and running. Uh, I, f- I feel like I feel like yeah, I did have some part in messing up audio and, and technical difficulties. Sure. Has to be something. You can't get into the channel. You can't unmute. Something it has to be something. That's right. Um, well. That's uh, we had this really great intro where I went over everything and I'm I'm already forgetting what we talked about. Right. So we talked about you know we all we're we're, we're very complex yeah. people. So we talked about you know the we have we have methods of speaking about certain things, but this was kind of a, a, an idea to you know open that up to That's other topics. Perfect. Yeah. Um, get, get, give the yeah, pitch. So man. Jason and I, I've got a war game podcast. Jason's got a war game podcast. We do actual plays of RPGs. Uh, but sometimes those aren't the platforms to talk about all the shit we would like to talk about. And, uh, Sometimes, sometimes they, are. they are. You're right. Uh, but this is also <laughs> there's there's tequila talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's pin talk and mechanical keyboard talk, and that's right. Depending on where you end up. Right. Uh, and this is cheaper than therapy. So so here we are tonight. Um, and I was telling Jason in our first go around that this really could have been ten any of ten different topics with him. Uh, pipes, pins, music. Yep. It will be. Yeah. It will be. Yeah, well, I'll hell, be back. Hell yeah, we've got some uh, we've got some guests lined up over the next couple months. Uh, I think it's going to be a good time, but uh, we'll get you back in here and uh, any of those things are good topics. But uh, tonight we're relaxing, which is good because it was a little stressful start. But I've got I've yeah. got my beach. Yeah. I've got I've got my cocktail. It's very nice. Are you ready to go? Yeah, let's do let's it. Do well, it. First off, I I think we should start with uh, why don't you tell people who you are and then plug whatever you want to plug. Sure. We can do that. Uh, my name is Jason. I do all kinds of dumb shit on the internet. Um, notably the advanced after combat podcast. We talk about war games. Uh, we get drunk most of the time. Uh, there's a quiz. It's a lot of fun. Um, I used to do YouTube way back in the day, but the podcast is so much easier. There's, almost no editing as, as everybody knows. Um, so that's kind of the, the per- preferred platform. Uh, we also RPG, like, like Matt said on, um, alcoholic adventure cabal, we do all kinds of crazy RPGs. Um, and what else, what do I need to plug? Oh, I'm, I, I'm going to have there a Kickstarter next month. Yeah. So, Ooh, uh, make that. Yeah. Better. So this is just like my, my home, my home copy. Um, so I'm kickstarting a little RPG zine, uh, that will have some hand-drawn art in it that's in here somewhere for the map, um, some little adventures. Matt's been, Matt's been playing in that. We're having a lot of fun. It's a very simple sci-fi RPG based on, um, in the light of the ghost star, in the light of a ghost star by Nate Treme, um, and his tunnel goon, tunnel goons as well. Um, so kick that up on Kickstarter for zine quest and, uh, I'll actually, you know what, I'll put a link in the, in the chat here in a little oh, bit, yeah. but that's, that's really all I have to plug here to talk about rum and music and fancy shirts. Yep. We, we talked earlier and you didn't have wine, wine shirt on. I was like, mm, I don't, I mean, this, I saw, I told but... you I changed. Yeah. I was wearing my army PT shirt. We'll, we'll talk about it later, later, but I'm also, uh, if I can figure this out, I'm wearing my retro cocktail hour shirt. Uh, which we'll talk about, which is, uh, for me, actually a big reason of why I've got into this whole, like, being tiki as fuck is, is the way to say it. Um, yeah. But just real quick, I want to go back to the RPG because I think it's dope what you're doing. Um, I would love to do a zine someday. It's awesome that yours is kicking off. I've played the game, guys. It's super fun, uh, super light, which is good, I think, in when we have so many freaking hobbies going on and so many things to do. 
Um, and also we've played it. Well, I've played it stone sober, but I've also played it like eight sheets to the wind. <laughs> yeah, the right, right, that, right. yeah. Yeah. I've been a river yeah. of a river of alcohol instead of stone sober, but uh, it's great. So check it out for sure. Yeah. It's Good. Fun. Let's uh, let's, let's kick this off. Um, so y- you mentioned like how much easier a podcast is in my eyes. This live stream is even easier. The prep work I did for this was like, pick out what I wanted to drink pregame yeah. and make some tacos, you know? So like we yeah. have a little, some topics to go over, but it's like booze and, and things like that. So right. All uh, stuff. my idea of this is it's just a conversation. We'll hang out. If you've got questions in the chat, um, we'll have question and answer at the end, but obviously if you got something now, um, heck yeah, let's see. I'll try to talk a little light. Uh, Oh, I think that was a joke. Sorry, I thought it needs to be louder. If I need to go louder, I can't change the size of my mic. <laughs> uh, no matter what I tell my wife, it is it is what it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's do this. What yeah, are you yeah. drinking? I am having a deathbed swizzle, which I first drank this this past Halloween. We had some friends over. We did the social distancing around a bonfire, brought the TVs out, and we watched uh, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, which is one of my favorite uh, horror nice. movies absolutely hilarious and i had this and it was uh, a real surprise you gave me the recipe uh super good it's really um kind of a tangy bitter there's not a lot of sweetness in yeah. this a lot of tiki drinks and we can talk about this are, are sweet um but they're also typically very strong and this one is very strong very strong and uh that's a good segue into uh the wonderful recipe cards that you did those yeah. are posted in the uh, the chat over there. So uh, go grab yours. I plan on printing them off and hosting them at a, whenever we get a tiki party up and going. Uh, but this is the deathbed swizzle. One one change is it needs a dash of absinthe. Yeah, I for for some reason the the recipe I I referenced didn't have that in there, so I forgot about it. But yeah, add that little dash of absinthe, and it gives it a little little uh, licorice back end. It's it's a good drink. The the unique thing about this drink as opposed to cuz it's basically rum, lime and pineapple juice, but the kicker here is cherry herring. Mm-hmm. Um which is a it's it's not a sweet liqueur by any means. Uh, it's pretty strong, but it's some kind of cherry based liqueur. I, you may know more about it than Yeah, that. it's kind of a bitter cherry. Yeah. And so it's What are you drinking? Um I made a navy I actually um I had a death bud swizzle with our tacos as well. Uh oh, nice. I made a, a Navy grog in my Trader Sam's mug here, uh, with my, with my Mickey Mouse swizzle stick on the rock candy. Yeah. Um, Cause I'm sure we'll talk about Trader Sam's. Um, and I think Navy grogs on the, on, on the menu as well. Great classic tiki drink. Kind of one of the, it's, it's I think it's Aaron's second favorite tiki drink behind a painkiller. Nice. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Um, Good. No, that's a good start. Um, I'm actually because of our false start. I'm uh, I'm about ready for a new one. So, uh, give you guys a little bit of rundown. You know, we're gonna we're gonna talk about tiki joints. We're gonna talk about tiki culture, drinks, mugs, music. The music for me is is one of my favorite things about exotic music. Is just so relaxing and, and perfect in the spring yeah. and summer. But we're also gonna make some drinks. Uh, so I think we each got some recipes we're gonna make, and uh, just get more yep. and more drunk. That's, yeah, that sounds yeah, like a plan yeah, to yeah. me. Uh, so I think the the best place to start because uh, someone asked on Twitter, and then Rich, uh, the co-host of History on the Table with me, was, well, what is tiki? And actually they said the same thing. They said they know what tiki torches are. Oh, that's a good one. And I, I, I don't think we need to, like, tiki is this uh, representation of Polynesian culture starting <laughs> in the 1930s. I guess, like, the question is for right. you, yeah. what is tiki? I'll let you start. Um, man, that's a big question. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, th- I, I do. And, you know, I'm, I'm a, a little more on the political correct side and, you know, I read the, the articles that come out from like punch and you know, why we shouldn't call it tiki and whatever. Um, to me, it, I mean, it is, we, we joked before when it was, um, I think <laughs> before we were live, live, um, you know, it's kind of a mindset, right? Like it's, it's this kind of Island living. Um, it's, it's, 
it's strong, sweeter drinks. Um, the exotic music or exotica music, um, you know, with kind of that that island or jungle feel. Um, and really, it's for me. Um, you know, I had like a tea party at my house um, a couple of years ago, and you know, I was wearing a similar shirt, probably not this one, but you know, ends we went to high school together. Um, he was like, you know, back in the day, Jason would wear like black polo shirts and jeans, and that's it. Like him wearing a, a Hawaiian shirt is is ridiculous to me, uh, but it is kind of that escape, you know, kind of like RPGs, kind of like war games. Um, it's 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 a way to kind of separate a little bit from everyday life because you're making a drink with like, like 15 ingredients in it that, you know, three of them you had to make yourself <laughs> because the ones you buy at the store aren't very good, you know? So it's, it's this very intentional escape. And I, I think for me, that's, that's a big part of it. And, and the drinks are strong and they'll, they'll fuck you yeah. up. Um, well, you, you took what my buzzword was going to be and that that's escape because it's this very, um, you're right. It's tiki drinks. Some of them are very easy to make sure there's really easy cocktails, but, it's some of them are like eight step processes. And I think if you're getting <laughs> mad or stressing out during that process, like that's not how you're supposed to be doing it. All right. Right. Um, and it's all about, yeah, right. It's this representation of uh, Polynesian culture. And, sure. and that's what it yep. started with. Like in the forties, fifties and sixties, probably fifties, sixties, seventies, I would say massive blow up. Right. But it, if, like when I grew up, Tiki culture wasn't a thing that I saw. And even in sure. high school and college, but there's been kind of this revival over the last, I don't know how many years. I mean, you've been in it way more than I have. Um, but you see like there's these dedicated diehard Tiki fans that want right. to see this continue. And it actually, I think makes for a pretty cool community. And then you get some really uh, unique, everything, just unique art. I love this sure. like, sci-fi space age pop art. Sure. With Tiki, yeah. you know not not just the polynesian stuff but i love like i love seeing like an alien hanging right. out on a 1950s lounge couch you know right right yeah there's actually there's a local phoenix artist i'll, I'll find her name while, while you continue that that does kind of that sci-fi kind of retro futuristic mm -hmm. art and it's her paintings are, are phenomenal yeah. um and i mean i mean i think you see the love in places like Trader Sam's, whether you're you're at Trader mm -hmm. Sam's the original in uh, California at Disneyland or at Trader Sam's Grad Grotto in uh, in Florida, but also you walk into like the tiki bars I've been in, it's just like they're all over the top, but also it it just seems like everyone, right. the, even just the workers, like just want to be there, and you go in and it's like. Gosh, yeah. when we went to Tiki Cat, which we'll talk about before it closed down, it was the super. It was the night of the Super Bowl parade. And you walk okay. in and you're now you're in this tropical escape. And other than like a couple people wearing chief stuff, right. it's like you would have no fucking idea. And that's, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of <laughs> cool. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So to sum that up, I agree a hundred percent. It's all about the escape and just, just hanging out, like sitting on the porch and, and playing the Tiki playlist or listening to retro cocktail yep. hour, just getting shit faced, drinking Mai Tais. Yeah. Speaking of Mai Tais. Yeah. Yeah. Should I make one? <laughs> We sure. Skip ahead a little bit because I'm uh, my drink. You're empty. Gone. I am empty. Um, so a mai tai is a very uh, I don't know tr traditional tiki drink, and the the one thing I'll say about this is everyone has their own version. Um, there's ten different ways to make a mai tai. I mean, there's more than that, but one of my favorites is is Jason's recipe. So mm -hmm. instead of me reading a recipe card, if you don't mind, why don't you just walk me through it? Sure. Sure. That works. And I guess uh, this is good. Like uh, we could probably talk about essential things. Not, I don't think anything's really essential. Really, you just need to be able to measure your drinks, get them cold, and, and drink them. But I, I think there are some things that help, you know, do the tiki thing. Oh yeah, you want to talk as... about like tools of the trade kind of stuff? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's a good one. Uh, um, also, just you know, the the cheap plastic one from Target or Walmart. Um, I think this this one's my favorite because it has basically everything and. You know, if you get super, super fancy, um, I learned this from a guy on Instagram. Named, um, he he holds the the jigger and then holds the the tin, and so he, he's pouring and then he dumps, and then he's pouring and dumps, and it's kind of 
super efficient. Huh. Um, so when you know when we were still entertaining back in in 2019, um, I, I got really good at that because uh, <laughs> I like to make drinks when people come over. But it's been I think it's been since you know November of of 2019 that that I did that. But um, so yeah, you'll need something to measure. Um, teaspoons, tablespoons work too. You can, you can probably find ways to um, get around that. You'll need cocktail tins. Uh, you can use, you know, really anything that shuts. You can use a big mason jar, put some ice in it, throw a, throw a cap on it, shake it up. Crushed, um, crushed ice. Um, like, crushed ice. One thing that we should talk about is the actual importance of ice. These are very strong drinks, and, and they're meant to be enjoyed, and they kind of mellow out over time. Uh, I'm cheating tonight, yeah. so you don't. I've got like a canvas bag that it can be the shit out of ice. I bought a bag of Sonic ice, and it's the best like crushed ice. Nice, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. It's it's yeah, yeah. You say cheating, but that's actually the one of the easiest ways to go because it's oh. such good soft ice. Um, and you really, you know, when it says shake with crushed ice, you really want to give it a good shake because uh, you need that dilution to to kind of really make the the drink be what it what it should be. Um, you also need a lot of rum, yeah. right? <laughs> Uh, tiki drinks are mostly yeah rum um yeah i have i think that's all of my rums um and then like a fifth of my my tiki mugs behind me but um and then you know syrups uh when uh really any cocktail drink um but but tiki especially if it calls for fruit juice use fresh if you can Mm -hmm. that's you know I'm, i'm kind of a juice snob when it when it you know, when it comes there. Um, so you'll need like a, you know, hand squeezer juicer, something like that. Um, I also use a strainer. I like to get, you know, like the pulp out. Um, and then a lot of syrups. I like to make most of the syrups cause you kind of know what's in it. Most of the stuff you buy is, is going to be garbage. And I've, I've tried a lot of it. Yeah. And that's something that, um, was daunting to me at first. Like I didn't want to make syrups, like even honey syrup or simple syrup. I was like, well, fuck that. But actually that's, that's kind of that process we talked about. Like actually making the honey syrup is like now, now a thing I kind of enjoy, which is super easy. The one thing I'm not, I'm not to the level of making yet. And everyone says it's easy. I'm not making my own or jaw or, or Jay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which we're going to need for this. So I buy at my liquor store, I buy the Giffords. You can get some better. Yeah, That's good stuff. And this is fine. It's just a little, I think this is sweeter then and probably less flavorful than like homemade all right okay. so, so how much am i adding here um that's a good question let me, let me get over here i don't have all this stuff memorized like oh, i used to right. yeah and so typically in cocktail uh recipes they call for the booze first oh. um and so typically well no in the, in the recipe right when you're reading the recipe oh, okay the it's the booze first but you actually really want to go in reverse order mm. um booze last just in case you mess something up right if you put way too much lime juice in there and you know you have three ounces of very expensive rum um it, it becomes harder to throw away what i do pro tip you just double the drink at that episode <laughs> right, <laughs> at that right, point right. Um, yeah. but yeah so typically they you know they they say to kind of go in reverse order um so uh do you have simple syrup so you'll you'll do a quarter ounce of simple syrup. Uh, I think the recipe I have calls for rich rich simple syrup, which is uh, two parts water to or two parts sugar to one part water. Um, you know, if you just have one to one, that's that's going to be fine. It's it's plenty sweet as it is. Uh, yeah, and then to you'll be honest, add. Um, I think the recipe I've been using from you for a long time actually I wasn't using. For a long time, I had not been using simple syrup, which, again, this gets into – there's a million different versions sure. of the Mai Tai. Um, so if you don't want the simple syrup, if you're weight conscious or something like that, like cutting out sugar water, yeah, that should be the first thing to sure. get. But um, I did make one tonight with uh, simple syrup, and I was like, well, maybe I should be doing it. So right. <laughs> simple syrup. Yeah, it's up to you. And, and so the, the recipe I have calls for rich, but I typically use just regular one-to-one simple syrup because I – I'm. I don't like super sweet drinks. So, um, and then that orja you had, you'll, you'll use a half ounce of that. All right. And orja, uh, for anybody who's listening and doesn't know is, is, a an almond simple syrup, basically. Um, super good. I'm, yeah, I, I love almond. Um, and maybe that's probably, that's probably why, why my ties are, 
are so important to me. Uh, but I make mine really fast with like almond milk that I boil down, add some sugar, um, and then add just a little bit of almond extract and orange blossom water and rose water too. But um, you'll do a half ounce of orange curacao. Um, I use the cheap stuff because I can't get Pierre or Fernand or whatever. Yeah, so yeah. Th- that's really what you want. Uh, it's very expensive, but you don't use a ton of it. Um, yeah, I've had this for quite a while. Yeah, I mean, the only reason it's going empty is because of how many Mai Tais I drink, to be honest. Yeah, Most... yeah we had a hard time getting it here for some reason for a while. I think it's in stock now. But Three, three quarters ounce of lime, is that right? Um, I do a full ounce. Okay. Oh. Yeah. And again, fresh, fresh if you can. Yeah. And then, Squeeze and then the here's, night. here's, here's the, the fun thing to do, right? You could, you could batch a bunch of that and then kind of measure it out. You know, uh, if, if, if you don't know rum very well, um, it can be surprising how many different kinds of rum there are. So here's, you know, when you go to different bars, when you, when you see different recipes, the rum is a big part of what's different in them. Some of them will, you know, use, um, like, like you said, Matt, no simple syrup or, you know, this like pistachio or jar or whatever, but playing with rums and playing with the different ratios of rums really can make a huge difference, um, in, in how the Mai Tai turns out. Well, you, yeah, you, just specific types of rum. We were at the, um, we got a cabin at the lake, uh, to be secluded this summer away from everyone else. And, uh, I was making my father-in-law uh, a Mai Tai, and the first thing I used, which uh, you introduced me to, is a very funky overproof yep. rum called Ray and Nephew. Very good stuff. And yep. that was the first one, and I said, try this. And then I said, now I'm going to make this with, I think I maybe use Plantation 5-year, which is very good, just, you know, like mid-shelf, pretty cheap rum that's just good all right. around. And I said, you're going to miss that funk. Right. It's not a bad Mai Tai by any means, but I, I think you miss out with, like, the overproof. Yeah. Yeah. Ray and nephew overproof white is it like it smells, tastes like rotten banana. <laughs> um, and it's like, yeah, this like funky kind of weird flavor. Um, and, and, you know, most Mai Tais you encounter will have at least two rums in them because uh, you want something that's that's funky. And then you want something that's kind of like a like a caramely or rich kind of buttery buttery flavor so my preferred recipe um and i actually don't have any of the the dorley's five-year um is an ounce of dorley's uh either xo or five-year um which is a a good kind of middle of the road like matt was talking about middle of the road rum uh and then one ounce of that ray and nephew white and it those two complement each other really really well um i actually prefer just the plantation original dark uh in general to the Dorley's five year, but the Dorley's five year in a, in a Mai Tai is, is much better. It, it, for some reason it plays really nicely with that, with that Ray and nephew. So I'm going to mix it up a little bit tonight just because my go-to yeah, what are you doing? Ray nephew. Um, I recently, mm-hmm. and, and we've talked about this before. I, it took me a long time to oh, find yeah. rum fire. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm going to try a stuff. rum fire Mai Tai tonight, which is again, it's another white overproof Jamaican rum. So should be like in the same class as the Ray and nephew. I think it's yep. here. It's harder to find. Um, and I've, I've heard it's pretty funky. And then uh, I've got a whole bunch of rum over there. But all right, so I've got Plantation Original Dark. And then I thought about throwing in instead of that an ounce of the um, the pot still. Uh, nice. Which would you go with? Yeah. Oh. The the pot still. I mean, that's. I think that'll. Uh, um, mm, pot. Rum fire is really. And I, yeah, I think that pot still will go go really nicely with that. I do enjoy a, a pot still rum. Couldn't tell you what it is, but it's actually the uh, the Hamilton pot still was the first one. I, when it, the first cocktails I was going to make at home, like I'm going to do tiki tonight, uh, which I, I've got a funny story behind that. Um, was Jama- uh, Hamilton's Jamaican pot st- black pot still or something? Mm-hmm. Like that. Haven't found it since. Love yep. it though. It's one of my favorite rums. Yeah, and it's not it's not expensive by any means. So yeah, I went with the uh, the plantation uh, Zaymaka or something like that. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna give this a good shake. Excuse the noise. I've got a bunch of crushed ice in here. Okay. Keep going. It just hurts. <laughs> it hurts so bad. It's getting cold. Yeah, keep going, Larry. 
right, yeah, so. that's one of the worst things for me when you're, you know, you're at a just regular restaurant and you see them making your drink and, you know, they put it in the shaker and they give it like, you know, the, the two week shakes and they dump it like, come on, that's the, the shaking does. It, it does something special. I, uh, and I pre sunk uh, a lime just because I've, since we're down yep. here, I've kind of set things aside. So I've got a, a lime already sunk in there. My favorite Mai Tai glass, which is Mai Tai glass that. Uh, features different scenes from Trader Sam's. Love this yeah. glass. Where'd you get that? Uh, this is from Trader Brandon. And okay. he's the guy that does, he did the designs for Trader Sam's. Okay. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah that's, that's fucking good. Those, it's a good drink. Uh, those, those, both those rums are uh, new to me. That's going to be a potent, potent cocktail. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I have... Uh, I plan on making at least one more before the uh, the night's over. And that's, I do too. That's yeah. a big boy. Um, great. That was uh, that was a good rundown. Go ahead. How how, how did you get into tiki? Um, okay, so it was it was a two part deal. First, um, we've got a wonderful public radio station here out of Lawrence KPR, and they have. Jazz in the Night and Trail Mix, which is this folky music station, but they advertise Retro Cocktail Hour. And I was part of this book club, um, and I started talking to this guy. He's like, oh, Retro Cocktail Hour, yada, yada, yada. And so Retro Cocktail Hour is all about that space age pop music, exotica, all of those things. And he does like, a, or he did before they shut down, a live DJ night at Tiki Cat. His name is Daryl Brogdon. He's got a voice made for radio. He's a fantastic DJ. So I was interested from that music already, and then we were taking a trip to Disney World, and I think okay, yep. um, I go on these kicks where I get way into defunct land. Like when I when I had COVID, I was like, "Hey, honey, I'm gonna do some some work this afternoon." She came in and checked on me. It's like three o'clock. I'm like, "I've been watching defunct land videos for the last six hours. I haven't done anything." Um, and they did an episode on Trader Sam's about um, designing the new one and all this stuff, and it was super interesting yeah. and like. When you read like the what do you do at Disney World, people are talking about going to Trader Sam's. And that's kind of my kick. Trader Sam's was really my first exposure to, to Tiki. Nice. And I mean the mugs are, are dope. I've got uh several up on the shelves yeah. here, but yeah. I mean and and we're gonna talk about them, but I mean just cool glasses and great drinks. But what about yeah. you? What was your what was your origin story? I think I think pretty similar actually. Um Kyle's taking credit for introducing me to rum, which <laughs> my memory, you know, beyond uh, the last week or so is is basically shot. So that that could be the case for all I know. Um, so I had gotten into kind of, you know, capital C cocktails um, and, you know, kind of went through this kind of progression where, you know, finding Amaro's that I really liked. And, and I think part of it was Aaron couldn't really, my wife uh, couldn't really join me on that. She doesn't really like super strong drinks. Um, she likes more sweeter kind of fruitier flavors. Um, and so I, I had found maybe a painkiller that that's probably one of the early recipes I found. Um, and then similar, we, we would go to Disneyland all the time. And one time we were there, I was like, man, I, I remember, cause I had gone to Disneyland all the time when I was a kid, like here, um, and we couldn't find it. Didn't I, apparently my, my Google game was very, very weak. So we were driving home, um, through Palm Springs. And I was like, I know there's Tiki bars in Palm Springs. Um, and there's two of them. Uh, so we stopped at one of them and got fucking loaded. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and you know, they didn't have food, which is a big complaint for me. We'll, I'm sure we'll talk about that later. Um, but you know, just kind of, I, I think we had made a couple of the drinks at, at home, but kind of being in a place like that with that kind of es- escapism, this place was um, you go through like a tiny doorway and then up a steep set of stairs into this, you know, dark teak wood bar um, with, you know, paintings of like, ve- you know, black velvet paintings of, of naked women and, and these wooden carvings and um, you know, the, the, the bartenders at, at Tiki bars tend to be, 
on the on the good end of of bartenders in general um you know super friendly very welcoming you know they're kind of living that like yeah man you know it's it's cool whatever and they'll help out they'll you know pour you a shot if if they like you and uh, just kind of fell in love with it and it was it was that kind of style of drink that that my wife really liked um and for me you know the the kind of alchemy of you know, putting everything together and, and building these different flavors, um, as a, as a former cook, um, really, really spoke to me. So, yeah, I, I, and it, we, we went pretty hardcore for, for a couple of years. Um, I was traveling for work and basically everywhere I would go, I would stop and, you know, see if there's a tiki yeah. bar is, you know, anything, um, a, approaching that, that style. Um, and we still do it. And, and it's funny it's so fucking hot in Phoenix. We tend to drink a lot of tiki drinks like in this time of year because it's, you know, even though we're not outside, it's, it's less of a pain to make, you know, a a 10 step drink. Um, So, you know, we'll, we'll have a lot of that stuff now. We'll, we'll do it in the pool as well, but you know, I'm not making um, three or four different pots of syrup on the, on the stove at one time during the summer because it's, it's just too hot. Sure. 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 Yeah, uh, before we went to uh, Trader Sam's, I started making stuff at at home. Um, And so where, like, Trader Sam's was my first zombie and uh, first Mm. first seven. Their zombie's good. Oh, man. If if zombies were not, and they're not that difficult, it just requires so many ingredients, like cinnamon syrup and all these things, so it's it's kind of a pain. But um, anyways, we we got smashed on like a January Friday and I'll never forget this because we watched Jaws and I made Puka Pumbaa's punch and I made Thing. Okay. something else, something else, maybe a Mai Tai, a who knows? And we just got obliterated. And then the next morning yeah. I'm laying in bed hung over as F and my wife just starts bawling. And oh, she no. comes in there. No, she, and she's pregnant. Oh, I, no. I was like, that was the first, like we had no idea. Like, no, obviously, we wouldn't have done that. Well, I may have done it. She wouldn't have done it, obviously. But uh, anyways, so I, I just remember that time. It's like, that's what, like, I was I was interested in tiki at that point, And that was, like, my first go-to. I found that tiki cat recipe. Yes. Puka Puma Punch comes from tiki cat. And it's pretty straightforward. It's got a lot of ingredients. But uh, I was like, let's watch Jaws. It's middle of January. It's cold as fuck outside. And let's get yeah. lit. And it was a good time. But I'll never forget it because the next morning. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And so that's uh, that's my origin story. That's good. Well, we're kind of on the topic, so let's talk about uh, let's talk about tiki bars. Um, yeah, and I I think like let's talk about Trader Sam's because I feel like that's the entry point for a lot of people is yeah. going um, going uh, to Trader Sam's, um, which is a fantastic tiki bar located in Disneyland and Disney World. Yep. And have you been to the Disney World one? I know you've been to the Disneyland. I've one. never been to Disney okay. World at all. Well, let's start with uh so Trader Sam's Grog Gatto is very small in Disney World. It's in the um well, it's in the Poly- it's in the Polynesian. Sure. Uh at Disney World. Uh you don't have to have a ticket to go in. The one downside is it's fucking busy. We waited 2 hours. My wife was pregnant fucking trooper she was like mm. downing dole whips like crazy as we nice. waited to yeah. get in and then she hung out with me like two hours while uh we got drunk I and mean, like we ate and stuff but it, it was yeah. uh, really packed um one cool thing about Gragado is there's a rum dole whip which you've had a mm-hmm. dole whip right yep okay so but they only serve it outside of trader sam's to like make it fair for the people who are stuck outside right uh, right and it's fucking great uh and so we hung out, and the the great thing about Trader Sam's is it's like a fucking show, because you order yeah. you order a mai tai, and there's a fucking hippopotamus attack, or yeah. you get a pearl diver, and they go reach into the pearl, and you get to see what color what color you get, and their right. mugs are fucking great. We got yes, several of them up there. So, um, Trader Sam's Gragado is fantastic, uh, really great experience. I think it's like the epitome of your tiki bar experience, where things are over the top. You're not just like hanging yep. out, relaxing. You can, but it's a show. Is it like that? Yeah, there's explosions. Oh yeah. Okay. If you order um oh man, I can't I am blanking on the, the name of the cocktail, but there's one that you know they'll it's like 
you know, this big thunderstorm and the, the bartenders have a spray bottle of water that they spray everybody with. And, um, uh, like a volcano goes off and, um, that kind of stuff is, it, you know, that's the escapism. Right. Mm -hmm. And again, super welcoming, super friendly. Um, their, their menu is very specific and that's really, you know, most of what they have, they'll, they'll make off drink menus, but, um, you know, they don't have this extensive rum list that, you know, some of these other kind yeah. of more boutique tiki bars have, but it's such a great experience. Um, yeah, the one in in California, same same deal. You have to get there basically at you know nine forty five to get in at the kind of eleven opening with any hope of really getting a table. Um, they serve food though, which which is very important to me. And you know, as as we talk about more places, that that becomes very important. Um, but their drinks are great. Their staff's excellent because they kind of have that Disney mentality of of really kind of. In, uh, enveloping you in this environment that they've created uh, and, and being very welcoming and v being very friendly. Um, and yeah, their mugs just kick ass. And they're all, they're all and, playing a role too. Like, right. They're all kind of sarcastic. Like it's kind of like being on the jungle cruise, like over the top. Yep. And mm -hmm. uh, the, the closest thing I think you can get to inside the park at Disney world. I've never been to Disneyland is the cantina over in adventure land, which is, Okay, this is getting way too. I'm, I'm going to break off here real quick, but in there used to be downtown. We need Disney, Disney off the table now. Yeah, no shit. I mean, well, that's what Defunct Land's for. Um, downtown Disney, which was like a nightclub hangout area in Disney mm -hmm. World, and there was the Adventurers Club, which is where a lot of the decorations for Trader Sam's and this canti cantina in Adventureland came from, and it kind of carries that vibe over. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, like, if you want the experience in the park, it's right across the street from where you get, or where you get Dole Whips, and it's like it, but nothing comes close to Trader Sam's. Everyone's playing a part. Everyone's a character. The drinks are dope. Yeah, they're very good, um, and they care about it. Um, we're we're going to talk about like things you can go like if I want to learn more about Tiki or whatever. You can you can go here check this out. Whatever. Um, there there's a podcast about the design process inside of Trader Sam's, and it's just it's pretty hmm. impressive. Yeah, um, I've, I've got a Trader Sam story and it's pretty short, but uh, we talk about Trader Sam's being a show. There are magic stools at the bar. So you sit there and they'll. OK, so that's not a California. Really? Oh, wow. No, I don't. I, I haven't witnessed that. No. OK, so at the bar stools will drop down slowly. Oh, Disney, no. But it's in control of the bartender. So th this couple walks in and this girl is smoking. The guy's a good-looking guy, but she's wearing, like, a cocktail dress. She's got high heels on. He comes in. He's got black slacks, sports coat, really well-dressed. Like, not like most people at Disney World who are wearing sneakers and shorts because you've been right. walking around all day, right? Because right? you're on vacation. Right. So, no idea what they're there. Do your thing. I'm not judging them for that. But this guy is obviously trying to impress this girl. And they sit down at the bar, and we're watching Kat and I. And I had told her about all the things. I was like, there's hippo attacks and there's magic bars. Not magic, but, you know, prank bar stools. And uh, this guy, it's going down. And he, he raises it up and he, he keeps checking it over like a 30-minute process. And eventually he's spinning the whole damn chair. And it's like <laughs> everyone knows. Everyone knows in the bar except these two. And everyone's right. watching. I'm just cracking up. Like, And I'm sure they have a good time. I'm not calling him like a, He's not a douchebag or anything. I'm not saying that. But. It was just sure. hilarious to watch this guy have this reaction to uh, <laughs> these these bar stools as he's just like because he keeps getting shorter and shorter like she's way up here and he just keeps going lower and lower and like that's the magic of Trader Sam's. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So that's, well, that's our shared experience, you know, going to Trader Sam's. Yeah. Um, Tell me about Tiki Cat. I never well, I never got there. Rest in peace, because yeah, there's there's a restaurant called Hop Cat. And it's got, I don't know, a dozen locations. It's a craft beer burger place all over the place. And one of the cool things that Hopcat does is it works with other tenants to, like, make, make each location unique. And Kansas City's deal was it had Tiki Cat, which was this basement tiki bar. You walk in, very small place, and it's, like, way tucked down in there. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I caught a girl smoking hot. My wife's listening. Hey, cat. Um... <laughs> Uh, so, I can't. so, um, you go in there and this is a great atmosphere. And like I said, you got this great DJ, Daryl Brogdon, that's playing live tiki music, great drinks, great mugs, pretty reasonably priced because we're in Kansas city. So everything's reasonably priced. This is my, uh, tiki cat mug here. 
and I'm going to make the Puka Pumba, Puka Pumba punch in this before the night's over. Um, nothing over the top. Like, they didn't do any – there were no scenes, but it really was – the coolest thing I thought they had was they had, like, private cabanas that were part of the – the bar oh, and like you're still hanging out with everyone but like you could almost have like a private room and still get the, the same experience yeah the good news is is kansas city's supposed to get a new thai tiki bar rooftop restaurant which i think is a really nice blend. So, yeah that was that was going to be my million dollar idea i wanted so i've I, initially because i love thai food i wanted and there's a, a place up by us um that they're in um, kind of like the retired area of, of town, um, but their their food is amazing. And so I thought, like, you know, can I approach them about opening someplace like downtown and do tiki drinks and Thai food? Because, you know, just it's a lot of citrus and, you yeah. know, you get the heat from the Thai food and then kind of the, the sweet and bitter from, from the drinks. Um, and, I, I mean, obviously I'm not that guy, but it's <laughs> <laughs> a good idea. So that might get me to Kansas City because that that combination for me is just that yeah. sounds so good. Yeah. So what's uh, what's the tiki bar scene like in uh, Phoenix? You know, it's pretty good. Um, we have, um, well, I guess it, it's less good these days, but we have kind of a local chain called Hula's um, that's that's pretty good. Um, we also have uh, a tiki bar called Undertow that's kind of like nationally acclaimed. They actually just moved to the new location. The old location was, um, you know, in the kind of gentrification of downtown. They took over like a Jiffy Lube and put a put a um, coffee bar up top. So it was like this, you know, pretty nice coffee shop. They sold wine and kind of local craft beer. beer. Um, but uh, one of the, one of our local bartenders, um, in the, in the, like the, the pit where the guys would go down and change the oil, built a tiki bar down there. <laughs> so I don't know if you've seen those things, yeah, yeah. but they're not very big. Right. And so they themed it like you're in, you know, the under part of a wooden ship and it felt like that. Nice. Um, so there's like portholes everywhere. Um, the bar looks like um you know looks like something out of like fucking peter pan you know or hook um and it's it's great atmosphere um they do a lot of like smoked cinnamon so then you get like this smoky air because they're they're smoking cinnamon sticks and sticking them in drinks um their drinks are phenomenal one of the best mai tais i've ever had came came from undertow uh, was it to go my problem is right? it was yeah yeah uh, they, you know, during COVID, they they did to go my ties, and um, I need to go back and look at the because they they sent like you know what the what the ingredients were. I need to go back and look at that. But the problem is, my wife is claustrophobic, mm. so we're in this like <laughs> you know, fifteen by thirty foot room with one exit. Uh, she could never relax. She didn't get that escapism being down there. Um, so it was hard for us to just go and. And they also didn't have food, um, and food for me is is a big part of it. Um, and Hula's does. Hula's drinks are way f- far inferior to to what Undertow's doing. Um, but they just moved, and I I think they're gonna have food because they're like next to one of their like sister establishments at a restaurant. Um, um, there was another one. We have like a douchey kind of Scottsdale tiki bar that just opened up. Um, that's called something kind of cheeky. I can't remember exactly what it's called. We haven't been there. Um, I don't know how their drinks are because we haven't been there. But I want to go just to see. But sure. you know, their advertising is very uh, kind of not <laughs> not really what right. I'm looking for. Yeah, that's sometimes I'm skeptical of like something advertised as a as a tiki bar. There was I don't think it's updated anymore a uh, a website for like a guide to tiki restaurants across the the nation but i don't think mm-hmm. they've updated and the, the big problem is you don't know if something's closed so like right tiki cat oh man here comes the slurs tiki cat is very highly rated on there but tiki cat's gone um, right basically hopcat said you, you can't come back after the the pandemic um yeah. 
before we before we talk about bars, I want to first off, I want to thank everyone that's that's in the chat. Uh, thanks Hell for yeah. and hanging out. Uh, some nice. great, some great. Matt stuff. Allen knows I'm talking about line Thai. Yep, line Thai. That's that's the best Thai food in Phoenix. Some some great stuff over there. Some great friends over there. Uh, I got a Kyle's talking about manifesto. Uh, hell yeah, Manifesto was dope. I even I don't know if Manifesto still open. I I did hear about Rieger closing. Uh, that was a great speakeasy in Kansas City. Um, we did do a speakeasy in Omaha. That was dope. Kyle, speaking of speakeasies, um, my Call of Cthulhu campaign is named after Tomstown, <laughs> the gin producer here in Kansas City. They've opened a speakeasy above Tomstown. So if you ever get to Kansas City again, oh, nice. you and I will, uh, or anyone who's listening, uh, let's go ahead to Tomstown and uh, check out their upstairs speakeasy. Um, I see Dave and Dave in there giving us a lot of shit. Duck, yeah. B mode. War game tiki pairings. Um, anything in the Pacific Theater. Yeah, there you, you, know, you get your Tarawa. Um, um, yeah. Uh, what's the what's the GMT Polynesian? Oh yeah, uh, Conquest of Paradise. Yeah, there you go. That's the perfect yeah. one. You nailed it. Yeah. Uh, so like, what about? All right, so let's let's venture out of uh, yeah. of Phoenix and stuff. So like. What are a few just around the world, or I guess around the United States, that you've been to that they would recommend to people in, in big cities? How, how long do we have? Uh, all right, give me <laughs> give me like your top three favorite tiki bars. Okay, okay, that's going to be hard. I might go to five. <laughs> uh, so it's it, it it won't be on the list, but there's a tiki bar in Tucson that's surprisingly great called um, I think Con Tiki. Um, great food. Their tuna melt is fantastic, and their their drinks are really good um so top three um excluding trader sam i don't know if trader sam's will make your sure. list but sure um there's hmm but see that's hard um Uh, there's a tiki drink. There's a, t- a tiki drink. There is a tiki drink. There's a tiki bar in San Diego. The, well, there's a lot in San Diego. Sa- San Diego is kind of like a, a hub for tiki drink, t- tiki bars. Excuse me. I need to slow down. Um, so there's like, um, oh, what's uh, now? Now I'm losing the thread. Um, anyway, there's false <laughs> idol, which is uh, false idol and grass skirt are both kind of speakeasy kind of tiki bars where you end up going into a restaurant and then going through like their walk-in freezer door oh, nice. in, into this tiki, tiki bar. Um, there's a big one that's like on the, on the sea. It's really good. It's really classy. Um, there's false idol, which is kind of downtown and then up in Pacific Heights, there's this one uh, false idol doesn't have food. Their, their drinks are very good. Um, but up in Pacific Heights, is uh it a, a, a bar called the grass skirt and you walk into this like poke um uh masubi place and you go through their their walk-in and you're in this like great atmospheric tiki bar they do you know the light shows when you order certain drinks um they they keep um oh um chichis which is basically a vodka um What's, what's the <laughs> Jesus Christ? Uh, what's the just you know coconut rum drink? Like Malibu. Oh no, Malibu, Caribou Lou. No, that's no, it's that's you know it's like a blended cocktail. A- anyway, a chichi is like a, it's just oh, like coconut pina colada. Cream. Pina colada. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Um, so a chichi is kind of like that, and they keep it in like a slurpy machine. So you can just order it and they're super cheap. They're like, oh, I love a good pina colada. Everything else is like $50. And um, their their drinks are phenomenal. I got fucked up there one night because I, you know, I got to talk about rum and, um, you know, can I try this? Can I try that? You know, I'm buying shots of, of different rums between tiki drinks. Um, they're, they're, like I said, their food's fantastic. They have, you know, hamburgers and, and tacos, um, pork buns, things like that. Um Three dots and a dash mm. in Chicago mm. is is outstanding. Uh, great atmosphere. Thank you, thank you, Kyle. Great atmosphere. Actually, that's where this is from. So as you walk in, again, it's kind of this kind of underground place. You walk in and you see this like s- s- uh, skull 
ceiling above you as you walk down. So that's that's the mug we got. Um, they're named after a very famous drink. Um, Dave, I think that's called a rum and coke. <laughs> um, let, let me ask, farther. let me ask you something. What 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 about mm-hmm. what's your opinion on on Trader Vix, which is like as as much of a chain as you could be, which by that I mean they have like six locations, one of them being in the San Jose airport. But uh, have you ever been to Trader Vix? What do you think? I I haven't. Oh, um, no. I guess there was one in Phoenix. There's one in Atlanta, um, but there was one in Phoenix that closed. Like, um, and Matt might be able to correct me, but um, it closed like right before he and I kind of got into our our big kind of cocktail craze um so i haven't been there i have been to don the beachcombers in long beach um and it is a shithole um really and they st- oh yeah it sucked it was awful wow um and that's kind of one of the original tiki bars but the the thing with don the beachcomber and trader vic as well they kept their recipe secret right right so everything's bottled still so i went to the beachcomber my and the guy pulled this thing out of you know like the glass. he didn't make it in front of me wow he just poured this drink into into a glass of crushed ice and it was awful huh. it, it was the worst my tie i've ever had wow um you know the atmosphere was kind of cool um they had a live band playing some kind of surf punk that that was that was fun but the food wasn't very good the drinks weren't very good um and anywhere that they're kind of bottling something for you you're not getting that real kind of um that real kind of experience oh i I, uh, I, I like some of the weirder places um oh for so let's talk let's talk about tiki tiki bars in las vegas so there's two mm-hmm. there's the golden idol and frankie's mm-hmm. um i love frankie's i have a i have i think most of their mugs this is they're frankenstein because it's frankie's um it's great it's a fucking dive bar it's and it's las it's las vegas so you can still smoke everywhere so it's smoky as hell um and the drinks aren't very good like the (laughs) the the frankie tastes kind of like um sweet tarts almost like it has this weird kind of yeah um but the atmosphere is great um the golden tiki in Las Vegas is phenomenal. Um, so I took uh, Leroy mm-hmm. Mark from the guild to Frankie's, you know, three or four years ago because uh, he lives there, and you know it was great. We we had a good time. He's actually the one who clued me on to drinking sel- seltzer water or club soda w- while you're drinking because it kind of spaces things out because I tend to drink pretty heavily. Um, and then the last time I was there, yeah, mm. last time we were there, um, we went to the Golden Tiki, which I had been before and didn't really have a great experience. I walked in, um, and they sat us right at the bar, like right by the front door. So mm. there's people in and out all the time, and it, and it, you know, you didn't get that that ex- escapism that, that that we've talked about. When Mark and I went this last time. We sat in the way, way back. Like you walked past this like clamshell stage into this like almost private room and we we're in this booth. I think they're giving us some alone time, which I appreciated. <laughs> uh, it was very it was very romantic. Um, their drinks are phenomenal and they, they were great the first time, but the atmosphere, you know, it was like, ah, it's just not not what I was looking for. So we sat back in the booth and there's again like like undertow. There's portholes everywhere and there's like uh pornography like you know vintage pornography in the uh-huh. portholes when you open them up um the wait staff was so uh like involved you know like they were they were very talkative and 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 um kind of joking with us and um so if if you're in las vegas i really like frankie's that's that's the place i'll go kind of you know seven times out of ten but the golden tiki blows it away but i i, I do love the shitty dive bar of, of sure. Frankie. Well, that's, I mean, there's a, everything's got to have an atmosphere or, you know, something that, that sets it apart. And so, like, there's, yeah. I get it. There's, there yeah. sounds like there's charms, charm to Frankie's. Um, but, I mean, fuck it. Las but Vegas that, has two and we have none. So, yeah, yeah. 
So I want to give two shout outs to some some weird spots. Let's hear them. There's a place in San Antonio called Hot Joy. Uh, it's a ramen shop. Uh, and they serve, they do like dim sum and they, they kind of mix things up, but, but their ramen is phenomenal, but they serve tiki drinks and they like the, the, the one downside is they don't have their own mugs. They're all like Mm -hmm. the, you know, whatever the like bartenders online, whatever, Mm -hmm. you know, generic tiki mugs, that's all they had. You can't buy them. Uh, but their food is phenomenal and their drinks were really, really good. Um, I go into a drink. (laughs) <laughs> I do go into a drink. I go into a drink looking for a bar. When I go into a tiki bar, um, the first drink I always order is a Mai Tai. Because if their Mai Tai isn't good, I'm basically done. Or is red with grenadine. Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, sign, there's, there's a, yeah, there's a, there's a place for the, the Hawaiian Mai Tai, but it's, yeah, it's, it's not my favorite. Um, so if you're in San Antonio, check out Hot Joy. They they do good stuff. Uh, also in Des Moines, Iowa, but Des Moines, Iowa does. There's this pizza place that's in an old Chinese restaurant. Okay, I've called, I, go on. I've heard of this, but yeah, Fung's, called Fong's, and they make like General Tso's pizza and sweet and sour chicken pizza. And I hate to say it, but it's delicious. Their pizza kicks ass like their their pepperoni pizza is great um but i had their pad thai pizza and like holy shit how (laughs) it has like a peanut sauce and and phenomenal um and actually that's where this mug is from uh right there and that's that's the one i it's not very practical but that's the one i keep my swizzle sticks in um the, the food's excellent. The, the drinks, again, kind of like Frankie's, the drinks aren't phenomenal, um, but they're but they're definitely serviceable. And and just like, you know, finding a, a tiki spot in Des Moines, Iowa, right. in this little <laughs> right. town, you know, it was such a such a joy. Like I, uh, one of my coworkers recommended it to me. That I, oh, you have to check this out. Um, Des Moines not far away. Sounds like I, yeah. I owe Toby and Jeff Kinney a visit. Hell Yeah. 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 So you, you mentioned their uh, the one bar with that doesn't have their own glassware. Dave's given us a lot of shit, or you a lot of shit about the glassware, and like I unashamedly a big attraction of tiki drinks is is the glassware. It's it's amazing. I have all these fucking board yeah. games, and if you go look at my vinyl collection right now, it's it's exponentially grown over the last three months. Like I show no self constraint. Miraculously, with tiki yep. mugs. I, I have basically stuck to I need to visit there. Now, when I went to Trader Sam's, it was like, oh, yeah, yep. I'll take the collectible mug with that. Um, but there are a couple yep. up there that are exceptions, but those were gifts. So, like, I have the I have the oh, Iron boy. Giant and yep. Hellboy mug. Uh, those were gifts. And, like, I've got a cheap uh, – it's behind the TV. You can't see it. I've got the cheap one you can get from Amazon that I found in a thrift store. So, sure. I'm actually able to show self-restraint with that, which is pretty cool. But the mugs fucking rock, man. Like that yeah. is a big part of it. So I do, I do the same thing. I, I tend to only buy from places uh, I visit. This is from Trader, Trader Sam's. This is, this is their zombie mug. Um, false idol. I've, I have a story about false idol, but, um, this volcano. And I try to also, I like, um, you know, like the, the character mugs. This is from, um, Smuggler's Cove in yeah. San Francisco. I their recipes are great. Their recipe book is great. Um, as a bar, it's not my favorite. I I prefer something like um, like three dots and a dash. It's again, it's very small. Um, their their staff is excellent, but the the a little less ergonomic. <laughs> so um, it's hard to get in. It's hard to sit anywhere. Um, but I, I, so I try to stick to either tall kind of character mugs or like volcanoes and barrels. Yeah. Um, and I, I only buy from places I've gone or get gifted. Uh, but I have, I mean, what I have eight out here and that's, I think like a fifth wow. of my, of my collection. This is ab- yeah. about everything. Um, 
the the one thing I would. Um... But then, but then you also, you know, let's not forget about the Mai Tai glasses, yes. right? Like they're easier to collect. Right. They're they fit inside of each other, um, and actually, you know, I have a lot of these things, but the Mai Tai glass is actually my preferred vessel for almost everything because it's, you know, this double rocks glass, great capacity, very ergonomical. Um, like Aaron has dropped a couple of these, sure. right? Cause it's, um, these Mai Tai glasses are just, I, I would rather buy, I mean, I like having the mug for the shelf, but, um, having, having the Mai Tai glass. So we, we do both. We end up sure. buying both. Which yeah, it's yeah. just yeah. on top of four fifteen dollar cocktails gets very expensive. Oh yeah, it's worth absolutely. It. Yeah, uh, I like. I'm glad I bought the Tiki Cat one, obviously, but oh, yeah. uh, it was like, yeah. Uh, yeah, especially I think that's the only one I'll get. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, and like talking about, pra- they're not practical. The Hippopotami Tai um, mug, like, yeah. I've knocked that over several times. Yeah, uh, shit like that. The the one thing I want is the the hat box ghost yeah um mug which is impossible to, i have the ornament and it, it's on the shelf uh there in front of toy story you i have the hitchhiking ghosts but not that's the, pretty fucking good like yeah, not the hat box you ghost. you throw haunted mansion into tiki shit and it's yeah. like yeah. Yeah, yeah i'm all over that yeah um yeah, so mugs are a big part. My tag glass as well. I'm just really picky on the the art designs. I did just buy a zombie glass. Um we're doing like a enamel pin display where our where our oh, gamer nice. board table's going. And uh cre- uh the Black Lagoon Room, who does a have you seen their uh Chinese takeout tiki mug? No. Yeah, I'm getting on the next order. It's a Chinese takeout box with these octopus okay. arms coming out and w- it is fucking dope. Um, but I got some of their enamel pins and I saw they had a zombie glass with like all the classic universal monsters. Oh, that's cool. Uh, holding different tiki drinks. It's like, fuck yeah, I'm all over that's that. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, one thing I didn't bring down is there's an artist in, uh, Disney studios or whatever. And I, I just bought it off eBay for the same price, whatever, um, that paints all of Trader Sam's custom mugs and the drinks with them. And like, okay. so I have a little like postcard print of that. And that's, that's pretty cool. It's a hell of a lot cheaper than buying each of the uh, Trader Sam's mugs. Yeah. They, it gets crazy. Nice, 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 nice. But you know, we, we go and my wife gets a purse that's hundreds of dollars. And so I'm like, yeah, I'm getting a $30. Mug. All right. Uh, <laughs> let's see. We jumped ahead a little bit to mugs, but it, it just flowed yeah. uh, naturally. How are you doing on drink level? Can, can we pause? Can we pause for yeah, a minute? Absolutely. Yeah. I'll, give me like three minutes. Okay. I'll, I'll field questions from the audience while you uh, sure. do yeah. your thing. Nice. All right. I see Duck, uh, Duck said, is that a uh, is that a game collection? I'll have you know, Duck, that this was intended to fit the entire collection, and, and we didn't get halfway halfway through it. So um, this is what made the shelves. Let's see. I'll scroll up a little bit again. Thanks for everyone joining. Shout out to David. I told him I'd give him a shout out. I'm going to get a drink that only has one ingredient. I'm not sure if I'm qualified to continue watching this, says Uncle John. Hell yeah, you're qualified. I say you are. Let's see. big deals talking about speakeasy in san francisco yeah that was like the late that was the hottest fucking thing a a few years ago right uh (laughs) i don't know who sgj jamie is but the grain of the tiki mug collectors you're right you need the new breed um the new breed to uh to stop the grain but uh, i've got this gray street going so i'm i'm part of the grain i guess when is Ozark Distillery starting to go releasing Age Spirits, Dave? Hey, uh, speaking of Ozark Distillery, uh, I found that locally. Um, Rich and I talked about it in the Lucas Liquor. Sh- wow, Lucas Liquor uh, right down the street uh, stocks it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get their bourbon, and I think they have like a like a blackberry moonshine or something like that. It sounded pretty good, so I'll give it a try. Bladder of an impact. Nice. Yeah. Uh, good. How's your drink level? 
Um, I'm still. I have like a quarter left. All right, all right. Well, you're up on the next recipe, so whenever you want to, you want to, yeah, uh, get one going. Nice. Um, good. Uh, we kind of talked about our uh, like the essentials. Like you went through them. I mean, the term essential is we're using it loosely because really the essential is rum and the ingredients to make your drink in a glass to fucking drink it in, right? Sure. Um, I think it's identifying what you want to drink and then and then branching out from there because one thing i've noticed is like tiki can be very wasteful lime juice only lasts for a few hours you know pineapple Mm. juice is only so good for when when Mm -hmm. you open it and then like that's the easy shit like now you're talking like white grapefruit juice or uh, passion fruit syrup and and shit like that like yeah that's the stuff like you know like plan for it you know yeah um but I'm gonna, I'm gonna shift gears, and we we've talked about favorite bars and mugs and all that stuff. What about just all around favorite favorite tiki drinks? We we've hit on the mai tai. Uh, and I, yeah, I think I think um, well, like like you said, I, it's worth exploring because there's a lot of stuff out there, sure. uh, and then finding kind of your your lane, I think is important so that you kind of know what to keep stocked, um, you know the things that you like. Um, so part of it for me is I'm allergic to most of this stuff. (laughs) So, yeah. So pineapple, coconut, uh, passion fruit, I'm allergic to all that stuff. Um, so I can take it in kind of small doses, but like a painkiller, I get like my lips swell up a little bit. My throat gets a little tight. Um, so I tend to stay away from that stuff. Um, passion fruit, especially I, I, I don't like it and I'm allergic to it. So I, I, um, I use it in my, in my zombie cause, cause it's called for, but, um, and then for, you know, it, you as well, I'm sure we have to also, you know, we're not mixing just for one. So if you could find something that, that you both enjoy, mm-hmm. that's, that's great. Um, finding people or finding drinks that, you know, people you're entertaining for will enjoy is, is important. And then you kind of stock toward that. Um, so we, and we have a ton of stuff kind of left over you know weird liqueurs you know weird syrup recipes yeah. that i'll never make again but um you know you have to so i went through this quest i wanted to try a pearl di- pearl diver it you know it's this classic tiki drink it comes in this like iconic glass it's very fragile and it looks beautiful um so i would go everywhere and and ask for a pearl diver at trader sam's they're like yeah we don't no, we can't do it. Um, a couple other places in San Diego. Trader Sam's is Pearl Diver. No, they don't. Well, they have. What's their Pearl drink? You know, like where they reach a, in and then see the white or black. They call it a black pearl, oh, and it's not okay, a, okay, okay, okay. All right. So, um, and yeah, I should I should find the guy if we talk about like influences, but because a Pearl Diver calls for this this like butter concoction called Gardenia mix. So I finally was like, fuck it. I'm going to make gardenia mix. So I made this batch of gardenia mix and it makes, I don't know, like a stick of butter's worth of, of this stuff that you then kind of whip into this drink. And we made it and Aaron was like, yeah, it's fine. And I hated it. (laughs) It was a year of me looking for this drink and then, you know, um, and it, I just didn't like it. And so, you know, finding those things, it was worth it. And, and it's a good story. Um, but, but you want to try different things right. to, to see kind of what you like. Um, so for me, I like the more herbal and bitter side of, of it. Um, so, you know, a Mai Tai is pretty sweet and Mai Tai, my Mai Tai is, is still pretty sweet. Um, but, you know, it does have that kind of, um, that almond from the orja, the the kind of clove. Um, I don't know. There's no there's no flournum in there, but you know the mint kind of kind of helps. Um, I tend to, and and I also like the gin tiki drinks a lot. Um, where Erin likes, you know, she likes a mai tai, she likes a navy grog. Um, a, I think a painkiller is her favorite, which is nice for me because it's so easy to make. Right. Uh, but I tend to go for like if if we go somewhere, like I said before, I know I'm getting at least two drinks. So I go in, I get a mai tai first thing, 
um, and then I'll get kind of something that looks, you know, if, if something has cinnamon in it or something that has mm-hmm. um, absinthe in it, I'll, I'll, I'll tend to order that kind of thing. Um, and she'll get typically, you know, like a um, like their house grog and then something kind of – she likes blue drinks. She likes coconut drinks, so she'll kind of tend toward toward that thing more. Nice. Um, How about you guys? Yeah, yeah. So real quick, I'll just uh, I I know Dave is saying this to fuck with us, but uh, as far as paleo drinks, there is a very good uh, low carb tiki uh, digital recipe book on Amazon. Now it involves like making your own syrups with uh, sugar alcohols, which I don't fuck around with because then you're gonna be on the pot all day. Like that's a bad. (laughs) Plus with alcohol, like I just don't see it going well. But um, like. I, yeah. I've checked it out. It seems good. Um, and like people on Reddit Tiki seem to, to really like it. So uh, I know you're saying that as a joke, but uh, it's out there. But it is actually like that is probably my biggest complaint with this shit is how much sugars sugars going into it. Um, as far as our favorites go, I'm more of like a, I want to try as many weird and di- different things. Cat's more of a. She's not really into the super sweet stuff. She loves a painkiller, though, because she loves a coconut cream. That's, like, one of her, her favorite yeah. things. Um, but she also doesn't venture too much into, into the sweet drinks, kind of like you. And she she also – I think she stays away from pineapple. I'd have to drink – check with her and see yeah. what she says, whatever. Um, I don't really know if I, like – at home, I have favorites that I go to. The Mai Tai, Puka Pumba Punch. Um I'm going to need to try this. Jungle Bird, uh, which I know you're not a fan of, which is basically, I, yeah. the, that's the Tiki Negroni, folks. It's pineapple juice, Campari, yeah. and rum. Um, and it fucks me up. Like, there's something <laughs> between the Campari and pineapple juice that just my allergies go oh, right. crazy. Oh, yeah. man. Like, my throat swells up. and I think yeah, it's, it's dependent it's on rum. The last one I, well, the, the problem is the last one I made, I made with 151 on accident. Um, but I do think it's kind of dependent on, on the rum on accident. Yeah. Um, a zon- Oh, I love a zombie. I yeah. think a zombie is one of my favorite things. The problem is like, I only have zombies when I'm out because I don't want to put the work in. Yeah. See, it, like, I don't know. It's, it's not that much work. Well, yeah, you got to make cinnamon syrup and like, that's, that's kind of, it's the same thing as making simple syrup. Yeah, sure. I know. <laughs> I, I, look, I understand. I understand the problem. Like the I also flaw. make my own grenadine, so I have to. I have to do both of those. Well, I almost a big so I, difference. Homemade I grenadine bought, and shit grenadine. Yeah. That's huge. Uh, pomegranate, granite juice, and I bought like the good Mexican cinnamon. Um, planning on making a zombie tonight, but I knew, um, you know, it, it would be a shit show <laughs> if I made a zombie. Yeah, and you fun. know, and that's funny. So, yeah, and they do. So um, the second time we went to Undertow, that that kind of um, oil can tiki bar, uh, we we drank so much. So it was um, me, my wife, Matt, and his Matt Allen and his wife, and Matt and I were like hitting it out of the park, just drinking. Um, I think we both had two or three drinks. We got a scorpion bowl, which is glorious. Yeah. A scorpion is fantastic. If you can find a scorpion recipe for like two people, it's glorious. Um, but most of them are like meant for like four, you know, like three to five people. So we were a big scorpion bowl, came out on this glorious clamshell thing. And our wives didn't like it. So Matt and I, you know, sucked it down. And so I got up much like just a few minutes ago. I was like, okay, I have to pee. Don't, I'm done. Like I, I could barely make it to the bathroom. I was, I was cogent, but I knew I was pretty fucked up. N- nothing else. I come back and there was a zombie waiting for me. <laughs> you need to finish that. We've paid already. We're going to go get hamburgers. So I sucked down this, this gnarly zombie and it was phenomenal, but I, I sucked it down as we we're walking out the door. And like, by the time we got to the car, I was done. I was done. And I was. I apologize to Matt and his wife for, for that night. Um, right. So I, I do like a zombie at home. Um, actually, my Dave will get a kick out of this. My 18-year-old daughter loves zombies. There's something in the – the um, I, th- I think she likes the absinthe and, and cinnamon syrup mm-hmm. and grapefruit kind of combination. But she – like when I ask her, hey, you know, we're going to do her for your birthday. What do you want? 
since she was 17. Oh, I want a zombie. Like, come on. Like, don't, please don't. <laughs> don't put me in that position. Don't. don't, don't yeah. Yeah. Because I'll do it. I'll do it. Um, so I, I tend to, be, you know, because I'm kind of that like Negroni, just whiskey in the glass guy, I'll tend to go toward more simple things unless we're doing like Aaron and I will just randomly on a on a Friday night like, hey, it's going to be tiki, tiki night. She likes one drink a night basically every night um but when it's tiki night you know we'll do two or three and yeah. and just kind of hang the next day nice uh another another favorite um probably not like it like it's not at the top rung for me but in terms of simplicity and like just a nice kind of refreshing drink uh blair reminded me of it because i know uh he really dug it is the corn and oil which is just a staple it, it's yeah. rum yeah. and falernum and uh, bitters, and that's where a lot of places stop. I think it needs the lime juice. Like for me, I I, I, I like, like the lime juice. I do too. Like a quarter to a half mm-hmm. ounce, just give it that squeeze. Drop, drop it in. Um, man, yeah, that's a that's a good drink. Yeah, it is. It's it's like a tiki old fashioned, right? like like where the the jungle birds, the Negroni, yeah, it, it's the corn oils, the old fashioned. very very spot on. I was reluctant to try them because I thought it used blackstrap rum, which is very um, molassesy, delicious. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Like the molasses for some, <laughs> most of them. Like I've got a bottle of Cruzan over there that I've hardly touched over the last year, or whatever. Um, but like Blair says, Ray and nephew and your corn and oil. Like you don't have to use the black trap, and it's good. Ooh. It's very good. Oh, I've never tried yeah, that. It's, it's good. I think that's the first one I had. And then when we when we did our podcast uh, earlier the the uh, best of i had corn and oil to get warmed up with ray and nephew and falernum yeah lime juice and yeah gotta have the lime juice in my opinion because <laughs> I, I told my father-in-law i was like hey uh i got him and, and we'll, we'll get there we'll get to all these things i'm sure but i got him smuggler's co for for christmas um it's a good book some my tag glasses on there's the a there's a cinnamon recipe cinnamon is, syrup recipe looked at it several times you should try so i was it. gonna do um <laughs> well i'm not going down that path i'm gonna stop right there um, <laughs> i told him i said hey check out page 184 whatever it, it's on and i said the corn and oil is really easy you don't have to go buy all these ingredients you just have to buy falernum and it's gonna last you a long time so like, yeah yeah i'll check it out and he's like after he had it, i was like oh i meant to tell you you need to add lime juice to the recipe he's like yeah uh, that would have probably yeah. helped so. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Like I, I tend to stick to you know the old school specs, but that that squeeze of lime is yep. it, it does. Yeah, I, I you know I'm kind of in the same way. Like I appreciate the recipes that are uh, not really throwbacks that kind of revive these old recipes, kind of like the mai tai. Like I I, I don't want grenadine in my mm-hmm. mai tai and, and things like that. Sure. Um, but I think it was you guys that said you wanted lime juice, and that's when I started throwing the lime juice in. Well, I started with lime juice; I didn't even try it without. Um, so, yeah, it's it's um, good. So the next the next big topic is is going to be uh, just the music and, and culture and the the media. You want to pause for for a drink refill? If you sure. don't, I do. So let me, let me kill All this right. one. No. What about uh? I'm tapped. What about everyone else? What's everyone drinking tonight? Yeah. While we uh, while we make some drinks. So what are you gonna what are you gonna make for us, Jason? I'm gonna make a trade wins. All right, I don't have this recipe, so I, I can't help you out with it. But I'm gonna make. Uh, by the way, guys, if if you haven't grabbed yet, check out this dope ass thing that Jason did. Um, we compiled some of our favorite recipes, and then he did these awesome um, spec drawings for recipes of so we got the deathbed swizzle on there we talked about that the jungle bird yep. his his mai tai the blackbeard's ghost is fucking great we didn't mention that that's, i love that's that a good drink, drink. yeah and, then I'm and so yeah let's puka pumba oh nice oh that's a that's a big drink yeah that's so a, let's talk song. about that mm-hmm. so you know there's all these rums you can buy i like i mean i have a lot of i have a lot of rum Rums. I keep a lot of rums because I because I like to burn through the stuff. If I'd recommend three rums to somebody, what would you recommend? All right. I think it's weird, but I would do the Ray and Nephew one. It's super cheap. It's twenty four bucks a bottle in Kansas City. Great, very funky rum. I because it's available here and affordable here. Plantation three year, Plantation five year. Um, oh. And if you want to branch out, sure, go go try something else. But like mm-hmm. 
you're not breaking the bank. You're probably walking out of there for 60 bucks. I think the Plantation 3 year for a cheap rum, like that's what they recommend for the first time you're making a Puka Pumba, is just get the Plantation yep. 3 year. Um, now that I've like tried some different things, um, like I think you could upgrade your Plantation a little bit, get the 5 year instead of the 3 year, stick with the Ray Nephew. Um, and I guess get like a... The El Dorado 12, which you told me about, I think that's like a good, a good wow. one to have on hand. I, I throw yeah. that in my, uh, my, uh, my Mai Tais and stuff. I know uh, B Mode's a big fan of the Rum Clement, the VSOP. It's good. Yep. I did a daiquiri the other night. It was very good, but it's not like a, that's like not like a must own for me. Yeah, and, and it's expensive, right? And I'm a cheap ass. It's not too so bad for my wife actually. Yeah, everything in Phoenix seems to be terribly expensive. So for my white, I use the Cruzan light aged. Um, it's cheaper than Bacardi and like 150 times better. I would also say Ray and Nephew. Um, it's not going to replace the kind of, you know, Myers dark Jamaican. Myers is shit. We all know it. Um, but. It, there's a very specific flavor there. I don't like Appleton. I don't think there's anything in the Appleton line that I that I like. Okay. Um, so, you know, I, I go with some some cheap dark Jamaican, uh, but the Ray and Nephew will fill that n- niche um, pretty nicely. And the just the Plantation Original Dark um, is cool. is such a great kind of clutch hitter. Uh, it'll replace a lot of different kind of dark aged rums. And again, you know, it's, it's like 20 bucks a bottle. I think my all time favorite is, um, I really like the Hamilton 151 Demerara. Um, but I think OFTD from plantation, the stuff here is, uh, yeah, that the Hamilton and Hamilton gets a lot of shit from like the snooty tiki bartenders. Cause they're like old school, old school distilleries. It's like open, pots and shit and so there's like you know bugs and shit in there but you know it's super high proof you know you're not you're you're not going to feel it uh but the plantation oftd for me it's it's uh smooth enough for me to sip it uh, and it mixes mixes super well uh but you you know you'll also need right you'll also need like you'll need things you know, Kyle was shitting on it earlier, but you'll need blue curse out because blue drinks are fantastic. Like if you don't like a blue drink, um, you know, maybe there's something wrong with you and then pick, you know, one or two drinks that take another liqueur. Yep. Um, so something like a blackberry liqueur, uh, like Don's own grog takes a blackberry liqueur. Like, um, and, and that's a, that's a great grog. Um, Again, I have the cheap shit because because that's how I apricot roll. Apricot liqueur, uh, apricot yep. liqueur. Uh, I've I've been ro- rocking the same bottle since uh, that pregnancy like... announcement. I use orchard. <laughs> um, yeah, you have the much. Well, I mean that's all that was here, but it, it's lasted me forever. But it's it's in the Blackbeard's Ghost. It's in the Puka Pumbas. So again, that yep. gets some use. Um, and it's in, it's in the trade winds. Another uh, another kind of weird one that I get a lot of use out of, yeah. but you only ever use like a quarter ounce of this, so quarter this will last ounce. forever, yep. is the Allspice Dram, which is fucking wild. It is yeah. strong, but it is good. I love like a good cinnamony or um, nutmeggy drink or like any kind of spicy yep. drink. So when you're throwing Allspice in, which I'm getting ready to do right here. I, I, and, I and the Allspice Dram is Allspice, like from, you know, like pumpkin pie spice. Mm-hmm. So it's that, that kind of little, little kernel. And it's, I, I actually made my own like five years ago and it's, I still have it, but um, yeah, that it's good stuff. It's kind of spicy and, and cinnamony, all spicy, I guess. Yeah, for sure. It, it's good. The, uh, the Puka Pumba punch follows the, uh, the tradition, traditional uh, recipe, like, uh, What's the four of this, three of that, two of that? Yeah, right, right. I've I've got it somewhere, but it ends up with like four of sweet or four of strong or whatever. And then Mm -hmm. the Puka Pumba throws in the five of spice, which is the all spice dram, and it does add that much more to the to the cocktail. It's it's good, good, good shit. So I'm gonna make a trade wins. 
um, and it has some of, some of these things we've been talking about. So with a trade winds, um, you can make it either with rum, and it calls for like a black rum. I would recommend OFTD or the Cruzan black strap, um, and then a light rum. Again, I'd recommend the Cruzan light aged. I make mine with gin, so there's there's a kind of alternate recipe. Um, the the gin ends up being a little boozier tasting. Uh, the rum kind of riffs on the sweetness and it, and it kind of amplifies it. It's a, it's a pretty sweet drink. It's probably at the, the kind of top end for me. Um, so I'm going to do two ounces of uh, of gin here, and I'm I'm not taking my own advice of going backward, but. Hey, speak, speaking of plantation, I'm uh, I'm trying the original dark for the first time tonight in the uh, Puka Pumba. That's tough. In my as my uh, oh for the first time. Yeah, as my uh, as my dark rum in this. It's a good sipper. We're gonna do one ounce of one ounce of fresh squeezed lemon juice. If I can get this on here. Mine has way more, way fewer ingredients than you. So an ounce of lemon, and then we'll do an ounce of coconut cream here. I thought I had all my ingredients, I'm just gonna... but I think I needed yeah. some plantation three years, so I better grab that. It's right there. Just get it. Yep. All right. Hold on one sec, folks. You gotta, you gotta shake it, and then we're just gonna shake that with some crushed ice here. I changed my mind. I'm, uh, I'm gonna mix it up. So, and I keep saying three years. Plant, plantation three star uh, is what it is. Um, I'm gonna go with the Probotas, which is this really good. Oh, funky, nice. Yeah. It's it's coffee still and pot still. I really like pot still rums. They got that that weird kind of rotten scent going on. And I just I sipped this the other night and it, it was uh, it was good shit. So I'm gonna put uh, I'm gonna mix it up. Get that in the mic right there. Yeah, that's right. Let's do it. And I'm going to use a nice bamboo glass here. You know what? Reusable straws here for I know the yeah yeah the listening audience is That's all I'm doing here. Shit about it. Yeah. Let's, let's say you don't want to spend 2021. Let's uh let's say you don't want to spend money on glass. My favorite tiki just home use is a footed pilsner glass. They get so much use for me. Like just like the mai tai glass, like and all the other stuff. If I don't want to hand wash a fucking tiki mug or shit like that, or a fucking Christmas elephant mug, um, a footed pilsner glass is a great recommendation to have. I think. Get the bamboo glass. How dare? Well, you? yeah, that's pretty fucking dope too. But <laughs> which is basically it the was, same thing. Yeah, yeah, it was like oh. six bucks on Amazon. And so then with the trade winds, of course, you know, you got to go all in. Oh. Yep, and you got you got to you got to fuck up a nice fuck up an umbrella because it's windy and then you, I'm gonna uh, it calls for a lime wedge or a lemon wedge but I just like the peel there and we'll just stick that in like that. Very nice. And it's good. It's it's um it's creamy. It does have like an almond, I think something from the from the apricot. It's a little sweeter than I typically go toward, but yeah, it's a good drink. Very good. And it's you know it's what four ingredients. Yeah, I'm su I'm still still working over here. Yeah, yours is a lot more. So while you're doing that, I wanted to talk about. So I have all these rums over here, um, and some of these won't go away. 
Like I have this um, Lemon Heart 1804, and there's you know an ounce and a half, two ounces left in that. And and sometimes you can use it, but again, if you're making a lot of drink, you know, if my plantation gets that low, and not another one at the store. This is something that I don't want to do. Uh -huh. We're to spin it for once. So when a bottle gets low, there's there's an ounce or so left, and it's just sitting on the shelf. I just stick it in here, and I keep a log of it, um, and just kind of dump it in here. So there's some, you know, old Myers. There's a lot of plantation. Um, there's definitely some Hamilton 151 in here. I can smell it just. Mm. Yeah, it's good. And I still haven't tasted it, Matt. If, if you're still still around, I love that so idea. That's going to need to come up. Yeah, it because I I have limited sh shelf space and obviously a lot of rum over there. So I kind of keep the the highlights um, and then the kind of you know clutch rotation players and then the the stuff that you know when when the plantation gets low, I know I'm going to buy another bottle. Or the doorly doorlies gets low, the 151 gets low. I'm gonna, you know, stuff you need to replace. Um, I just dump the rest in there and buy another bottle. Brilliant. Have this fantastic kind of funky bottle kicking around. Speaking of one, 151, I'm adding a, a floater of the uh, – I think I've got like Gosling's yeah. 151 upstairs instead. Um, but this Hamilton 151 is good, I think. Uh, by the way, Kat, there's uh, – if you don't mind being on camera, Let's... there's uh, like a, a little bit of Puka Pumba punch in this uh, that won't fit <laughs> if you want to come and grab it. Uh, I only made her one. Maybe, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna float some on my trade yeah, winds here too. Doing. Floating the 151 on top, and then I'll stir this around. Let's get fucked yep, up. There we go. All right. <clears throat> yeah, I love the, uh, mm. the infinity bottle concept. I didn't think about doing that with uh, with rums, but uh, I've thought about it with. I've rum and a bourbon. Matt Allen said he was going to do a scotch, which to me sounds super, super yeah, interesting. Yeah, no, I would, that's, that sounds good to me too. Um, let me... as, a, as a as a pro tip, if you if you're drinking a, a drink that you made at home, um, and it's too rich or too sweet or too strong, throw some seltzer water on it. Throw some club soda on it, and it kind of like you know when you add a couple drops of water into your scotch, it kind of opens it up a little bit um, and, and makes it a little little more palatable. Nice. And then it starts to drink, too. Cheers. Come All by. Right, let's talk about one of my favorite things, and I'll, uh, I'll throw some, uh, because of our, our false start, I'll throw some, uh, let me do this real quick. Nice. Just to, just to set the mood, you know. Um... All right, we're good. Okay. Um, one of my favorite things I've already talked about it is Exotica, the music. I, I threw culture in here, but really it's less so the culture. Like I said, I'm just as into the space age pop bachelor pad shit as I am like the Polynesian <laughs> culture and stuff. And I, I think it is important. Like it, it's to me, it's the same thing with like sports teams and stuff is if, if you're going to lean into those cultures, you got to do it in a respectful manner or stuff like that. I'm not like... Um, you know, I think I do think there's some things wrong with the Jungle Cruise. It's probably time to update that shit. But uh, I think I think all this stuff can be done in, a, in an appropriate way. You know, um, yeah, I think that's so. Let's talk. Uh, I'll uh, I'll kill the music here and let's talk. Uh, let's talk Exotica. And uh, you and I have talked a little bit before, um, but I don't. Is it is it you or your or your wife or Aaron that's not as big into Exotica? She doesn't really like it. Um, I, I like it. So if it's you know uh, you know an August Saturday and I take the boys out to the pool, I'm making. Th this is what happens. I make. Um, you, I think you have, you know, the the Star Wars tiki mug behind you. I have a similar from Universal. They're they're kind of Jurassic Park uh, plastic tiki mugs, um, and it holds 
more than this. Sure. Um, yeah, that's a big mug. So I make I make a planter's punch, um, which is just brown sugar, uh, water, lime juice, and rum, um, and it's in that typical or that that classic ratio, um, four three two one. Um, so I make basically like three of those and put it in this plastic mug with a bunch of crushed ice, and I go out in the pool turn on the Bluetooth speaker to just, you know, the, my exotica Pandora station. As soon as she comes out, she's changing the channel. There's something about it that she, she doesn't like, and I don't know what it is. Um, but for me, you know, like you said, it's very, it's very evocative and very relaxing. Um, because it's, it's barely music a lot of times, right? right? Like Bird it's calls and it's ship it, bells. Yeah. Yeah, so you get this kind of quiet jazz drum or bass line with some kind of random noises going on, uh, and it, for me, it does something. I it, and I tr- I tend to stick to kind of the classic that that kind of late fifties, early sixties vibe. I haven't gotten into any of the space mm-hmm. pop kind of S- spy kind music. of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it 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 does set a certain it mood, does. and especially in uh, in you know one of one of my tiki bar adventures, one of the guys was being super shitty about like, oh, who's your favorite Exotica artist? I'm like, I, I don't know, I don't I don't have one, you know. And he's being this kind of tiki hipster guy trying to school me, and. It, you know, if we get around to it, he's he's the guy who was weeping drunk by the end of the night. Um, for me, like it doesn't, I I don't have a, a big following of it. It's just there there's something about that. Um, you know, Martin Denny obviously is the big one. He he had the Exotica album. Um, there's a couple other artists, but it just that that kind of vibe is is really what I'm looking for. Yeah, and I think um, I. I w- basically everything you said um it's all about the vibe that i get from exotica and and, i usually just call it tiki music or whatever Uh, but then you can throw in that space age pop and spy music and um you you get some weird things with um the m squad the we've talked about it in vinyl uh i've got the album of that and that thing is like composed by count basie who's one of the best jazz musicians Mm, of all time and you get like this amazing film score or i guess show score from this guy and it's this awesome like kind of uh exotica spy noir score and it's fucking dope and it's all Mm. about the vibe it's giving me um and a, a lot of it stems from this appreciation I have for retro cocktail hour mm-hmm. and like the vibe that guy puts off. And so, yeah, yeah I saw him listen. Oh, you got to, you know, how far away is, um, damn it. I looked this up beforehand. There are some Arizona stations that syndicate it. Like you can listen online. Anyone can go listen online, retro mm-hmm. cocktail hour, give it a Google search, but there are uh, a couple of stations out in Arizona that syndicate it. Uh, there's a couple of stations okay. up in Seattle boys that, uh, that do it. It's, it, it really is one of my favorite things. Um, and they do this wacky ass, uh, film score Friday. And then they do, uh, they do a movie night and all this dope shit. It's cool. Not sure where I was going with all that other than like just exactly. hanging out on the back porch, get our tiki mm-hmm. torches, excuse me, tiki torches going all that shit. <laughs> Do you have tiki torches? Oh, yeah, we got them around the we got them around the fire pit, and then we got them up on the torch, yeah. like little little hooks. Uh, for Father's yeah. Day this year, my wife like kind of redid our back porch, and um, like someday I want a home bar, which uh, we're going to talk about that before we're done as well. Um, yeah. But like that's that's the best I can do right now, and that feeling is just so relaxing. Hop in the hammock, hear some some fucking exotica going. Um, yeah. So Kyle, Kyle says, I don't even know what Exotica is. I've gotten big into YouTube ASMR channels lately, though. Um, don't know. I, I don't want to make fun of you, um, but I took that in the sexual meaning. It sounds like you are actually enjoying those to enjoy, which is fucking awesome. You do you. I just know of ASMR as being like sexual things. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't think I don't think it's I don't think that's really what it is. I think that's what the, the non ASMR guys think. Yeah. Because I think it's, I think there's a, like a, 
a tingly situation more than a bossa nova that Dave, bossa nova is the yeah. word i was looking for that that whole vibe and yeah matt um i think if you wanted to check out like the tiki vibe music just go stream the latest episode of retro cocktail hour daryl brogdon will, will guide you all through it and you'll get some good stuff you know what there's some james bond tunes in there there's some uh martin denny Les Baxter, all that stuff going on. It's just, it's one of my favorite things of this whole culture. This whole tiki culture is uh, just the good music and the good vibes that you get from the music. Um, yeah. And, and I think it's a good transition into like, what do you, like, what media do you consume that's, that's tiki related? And I don't expect there to be a whole lot out there, but um, there's, there's not really anything for me. Like I said, you know, I'll put on the playlist. Um, if, if we're entertaining, I have, <laughs> I have this Pandora station. That's this mix of like Martin Denny and the slackers. So it's this like early nineties ska <laughs> with like early sixties exotica. Nice. Um, and it works really well. So it's, it's all like this, um, you know, if it was like on the indie side of that, you'd call it lo-fi, but it's this kind of very slow paced music. Um, the, you know, the ska has, has more lyrics, but, um, that, that kind of same, same vibe. That's one of my favorite things about going to Frankie's is they have these old, like nine inch CRTs kind of all over the place playing these old, like, um, surf movies and black and white and then monster movies kind of and they're not playing the movie they're playing like this weird cut of you know 90 seconds of the surf movie and then there's you know godzilla yeah. comes in or you know mothra kind of flies over there's or like um you know ed wood kind of flying saucers circling about um and i don't have uh, the <laughs> really the energy to kind of create that and and and, and do that in, in my home um, and it's not really what I'm after I, I want that when I go right. out right like creating a, a a tiki drink at home is one thing um, and and you can get make some really good drinks and, and have some really good vibes especially when you have people over you can put some of that music on in the background uh, but you, you know you're not gonna put on you know, surf pop movies when you have maybe if you had like 20 people over, but if you have three right. or four people over, you're not going to do that. Right. And we're not 15 people over kind of people typically. So we, we tend to kind of put some music on low in the background and, and, and make good drinks, make good food and, and have good conversation more than kind of the media that that surrounds yeah. it. Yeah. I would, I would like the thing I we've talked about for the last two years, cat was pregnant. And then we had Holly. I was like, well, let's wait a little bit. And then obviously COVID. The thing I want more than anything is just throw a bitch in tiki party. And, and uh, yeah. Dave down the lake of those arcs, he, uh, you better bet you're getting a, an, an invitation to that shit. Same with the boys out in St. Yeah. Louis. Uh, well, fuck it anyway. Yeah. Come, if you really want to come to Kansas City. But like, I just want to, and I, I, right. I don't want fucking surf movies on or anything. I just want to, I want to make drinks for everyone. Sure, I'll throw some fucking natty light in the fridge, but that's not the point. Because I know fucking my buddy Peter's going to come. I was like, where's your Coors Light? And I'm like, dude, this isn't right. about that. But, like, just hang out, make yeah, some fucking drinks with people, light all the fucking tiki torches, do some fucking poke bowls or something for everyone, and just, like, entertain them. I want that. Um, that's not where I was going with this. Oh, fuck, I'm, I'm getting there. Yeah. Um, here, yeah. Here's, yeah. here's what um, you mentioned, like, surf pop movies and then Godzilla coming in. I think one of the most attractive things to tiki culture for me is this sense of nostalgia. It's the same reason why mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. Mystery Science Theater 3000, which I know they still do new stuff, but to, it's similar vibe. Ms, yeah. MST3K is like this this memory I have as an 8-year-old like catching on an accident and then they're making fart jokes while yeah. someone passes out in a gas tube or some shit and like just losing yeah. my shit. I know they still make new shit, but it's a very nostalgic feeling for me. And that like kind of space age stuff like kind of pours into that I think, and it's all yeah. it's a very nostalgic feeling even though I didn't I did obviously I wasn't in fucking a tiki bar in the sixties but I just feel it you know. Sure. Yeah. My my five year old got into MST three K recently, mm. which kind of blew my mind a little bit. That's it, fucking awesome. It was a little shocking, but he likes monster movies. He likes yeah. kaiju. Uh, so he'll watch Pacific Rim and Godzilla King of the Monsters over and over again. So we found like this 
Godzilla versus I don't even think it's it's not Mothra. It's the um, oh, um, hitting one fifty one. The turtle. Sorry, cat. I'm putting the rest of yours in because now I'm just hitting one fifty one. <laughs> um. So yeah, I yeah I, I I get that. And and Matt says, does Gil get Hell, Sonic? Yeah. I think it does. Oh, yeah, it does. I think you know there's there's fucking coconut drinks in that in that show. And I think you know that kind of goofy vibe is is kind of you know well in line with um kind of my stylings i'm and i and i know i do this but i very much i'm not very silly i'm not very um kind of wacky you know um but i have this weird affinity toward toward things that are whimsical you know Mm -hmm. studio ghibli movies Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. think like Gilligan's Island that have this kind of sweet innocence to them. And I think, yeah, I think that's exactly right, Matt. Like the Gilligan's Island, like that kind of goofy Island vibe is, is kind of partly what I'm trying to get to. Hell Um, hell yeah. Uh, If any of you have, and Dave Dave does drink too fast to be a a tiki drinker, tiki drinker. But I think, I think we can work on that. I think Dave can come over, you know, we can make him a, a couple zombies and zombies you know, if you go to to a tiki bar, they'll always have that. You know, two drink limit on the zombie, mm. which I think is is kind of funny because there's as much rum in a zombie as there is in a navy grog. Right? It's three ounces of rum, three ounces of rum. Yeah, I think it's it's the allure, right? There, there. You're right, though. There's something, and part of it is marketing, sure. but there's something in that zombie um, that that kind of maybe it's the absinthe. But it, it fucks you up pretty pretty quickly. Um, but I I, th- I think we get Dave on the hell on yeah. The, uh, I think we can get tiki, anyone in. On I really tip. do. Like, yeah. come on. I I think um, I, I th- this is not the point of this podcast. But I, I'm thinking of like as part of Historic Fest. Like, I want to offer this deal. Like, come over on my back porch. Let's like some fucking tiki torches. I'll make you fucking tiki drinks. Um, yeah. Smoke a cigar. Smoke a pipe. Yeah. Have some rum. Hell yeah. Uh, I want to talk about Mystery Science Theater 3000 real quick, just real fast. If any of you have a smart Samsung TV, they have a free channel. Uh, like if you're on mm-hmm. like a – I use an antenna. I don't have cable anymore. I'm sure most of you don't either. Like they have free channels on there. One of the free channels, I shit you not, is a Mystery Science Theater slash Rift Tracks dedicated channel, and it's yep. fucking awesome. Yep. Yeah, that's what Cameron was watching. Nice. Uh, real quick, if you go up and chat, I sent my um, kind of my favorites from the Retro Cocktail Hour playlist. It's a good pl- like if you were doing like a just a, a tiki night, taco night, hanging out on the porch, whatever. That's a good playlist. Nice. That uh, hell yeah, you can you can sleep in my house, David. Uh, me too. Yeah. You can sleep in my bed, yeah. Dave. Come on, Mitch. Mitch has slept oh, in my, my war game room, which is just a bunch of bookshelves with <laughs> names on it. Um, <laughs> But sure, hell yeah. Um, so real quick, here's what I want to do now. Um, we're we're approaching the two hour mark. I want to guys get your questions in. So oh, type in your two questions. Hours. We'll answer any of them. It doesn't have to be related to tiki. We can talk about war games, whatever you want. Um, put them in chat. In the meantime, uh, Jason, you got to go through the lightning round now. So I well hold okay, on. Yeah, I want to yeah, tell yeah. this story. Yeah, yeah, do it. So do it. I, I alluded to it earlier. Um, so I have this great volcano mug from False Idol in, in San Diego. And it was one of my most anticipated tiki bar ventures. I went, and it's it's a pain in the ass. It, like, grass skirt is kind of hard to find. Um, False Idol is grass skirts in like a poke bar or a poke restaurant. Um, so it's at least close right like you think japanese food you think tiki Mm -hmm. it's 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 not a far leap false idols attached to an italian restaurant so i'm at this like classy as fuck italian restaurant address like how do i get into this tiki bar that i'm trying to go into and so i finally after some yeah some r slash tiki like you know i'm at the right place i go in and i you know tell the hostess um, I'm trying to go to the tiki bar. Um, she's like, oh yeah, come, come this way. And I'm by myself. 
and I get sat down. It's it's pretty dead. It's probably like a Wednesday or Thursday night, um, and it's basically like regulars around the bar. Um, this is pre-COVID, of course. You know when you could still go to a bar um, and sit next to a stranger, um, and so there's there's seats in there, and there's there's some really good like scenery, but. I, I got I got sat at the bar because I didn't have a reservation. It was you know basically you can sit in this one seat for the next sixty minutes and that's and that's it. Uh, so I get sat down and and to my left is a guy who's who's pretty cool. And to my right it's a guy and they're all basically my age. <clears throat> and I get the the the, the guy to the right um, looks like he's. Uh, had a couple already, I guess is, is how, how I'll say it. He he looks a little mopey, um, but so the guy on my left and I get talking, and you know we're, oh, what do you do? What do you do? You know, he's a local. I'm from out of town. Here's why I'm in town. Yada yada yada. <clears throat> the guy on the right's the one who's, you know, uh, a Martin Denny song comes on. Oh, who's your favorite? He's an artist. Yeah, you know, I I don't really have an answer for that. You know, everyone says Martin Denny, and that's you know bullshit and whatever <clears throat> what? and we're drinking on, stop i got it like come on buddy like you can't be hipster about people saying they like martin denny because it's already fucking like that's not like saying fucking yeah. taylor swift <laughs> sorry go on with I mean, that, what that, that's, that's what he was doing that's yeah. what he's doing so he kind of you know squirrels his way into our other conversation he's like yeah well i work on a long ship I, di- I didn't know that was still a living. Like, are you a merchant marine? Are you, you know, are you a privateer? What the f- what the fuck do you do? He's like, no, I work for the historical society. I work on, you know, whatever the the San Diego longship is. So he he takes tourists out on this sailing ship for like a week, and he's you know like a <laughs> yes, nerds. Nerds have taken over bar drinking. We're all nerds. Everybody's a nerd now. Um, so he's regaling me with these stories of his, you know, old school sailing, and that, and I'm pretty fucked up already. And I, you know, I'm trying to imagine like what is this guy's living in 2017, going out on these sailing ships for tourists. Like this is so crazy to me and so i'm 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 interested you know i'm I'm listening to a story and i'm i'm a good listener um so i you know i like to get in and you know tell me about all the details and so he tells me about taking these fucking tourists who don't know what they're doing and you know he has to cook food for them out in the middle of the sea and he's on this this old school sailing ship and and I'm, you know, asking dumbass questions like, you know, what is the footwear situation? Like, are you wearing like Nikes? You know, what do you? Because it, <laughs> it's it's so outside of my sure. my realm of experience. I have no idea. Um, and so, you know, he he kind of gets in his cups a little bit. He's he's concentrating on his drink. And by this time, I'm drinking rum fire straight. And I'm like, oh, you know, I've been looking for rum fire in Phoenix. We don't have it. Yada yada yada. Can I just get you know a pour of that straight? I, I just want to try it, and it's, and I'm a, I'm a fucking drinker, and rum fire is too much for me to drink straight. Um, so then I get talking to the guy on the left, and we kind of you know even things out a little bit. The guy on the right comes back with, yeah, you know Jennifer, you know I left her what? behind. <laughs> you can't and, just go with that. Man, I just, I just miss her so much. I'm like. And I, I was like, did I miss something? It's like, oh, Jennifer, you know, she's my, she's my girl. Like, you didn't tell me who Jennifer was. Oh, Jennifer is my ex-girlfriend. Okay. Yeah. And I just don't know. And he's, you know, talking about Jennifer and Jennifer this and Jennifer that. I'm like, dude, we were talking, like, <laughs> you're cooking for tourists. And now it's, you're talking about your ex-girlfriend and I'm fucked up. And he's he's way more fucked up, oh, you know. And he starts crying wow. on the bar stool sitting next to me, and he's <laughs> I don't know what to do. like. So I, you know, put my my credit card down on the bar, slid it over. It's like 
I need, you threw I need in the to towel, go, huh? I I threw in the towel, and I'm you know I I I. <laughs> it was too there much for me. It's too much. That guy yeah. peed in the sink that night. I guarantee it. <laughs> Probably on the long. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, you know that's yeah. that's something I've avoided in tiki bars. Is the uh, now I've ran into that for sure. The fucking chatterbox in Lansing, which is a private club, and fucking all kinds of characters and bullshit like that. But uh, not in a tiki bar. Usually, that's something. Um. Well, good. I'm glad you got out of there. Uh, I'm gonna. Yeah, gonna I got out. Go I. I was gonna say I don't think I slept in my car that night, but but grass crew. Oh I slept in my boy, car. I haven't. Yeah, I haven't done yeah. that. Yeah, fucking. That's pretty fucked up. Went to a casino one night. And my buddy slept in the car. Anyway, that's that's a whole other <laughs> fucking time. Way too fucking drunk. My buddy rolled for an hour and a half fucking straight, but we were so fucking drunk we couldn't capitalize. It. He's like, if one of you guys would have made a fire bet, you'd been walking out of here with thousands of dollars. Anyways, uh, all right. I, I see Uncle John's question. I'm gonna flag that. Uh, get your questions in okay. after that. Uh, Jason, oh, yeah. are you ready for uh, the lightning round? Okay. Fuck yeah. Um, these are bonus and count all at the same time. All right. Uh, so no clarifying questions. You just got to answer, right? Okay. <laughs> cool. So, whatever it is. However, <laughs> however oh, you I hate these guys. Right, we'll questions. start off and we'll, we'll, we'll just keep rolling. All right. You ready? And this is everything. Yep. This isn't just tiki drinks. All right. Here we go, boys. Uh, favorite yeah. military topic to play a war game on? Vietnam. Army or Navy? Negroni Army. or Mai Tai? Negroni. Best gaming experience. Ooh. Um, 1889 at the first AAC nice. Con. Uh, game you've always wanted to play but haven't? Uh, uh, Axis Empires, nice. Dicenso. Last game you didn't enjoy. Oh. Hmm. That'd be a hmm. game. Um, probably some random magazine game. Um, what was the last Compass game yeah, I what played? What was that Vietnam Compass game that was a shit show? Oh, yeah, Vietnam yeah. Rumor of War. Yeah, uh, thank you. Pineapple well, or Coke? Yeah, sucked. Ooh, I'm allergic to both, but I'll say, I'll say pineapple. Uh, favorite convention? AC uh, Con, baby. Yeah, that was a, that was a softball. <laughs> that was best, softball. Best Jesus. RPG setting. Oh, um, uh, low fantasy. Nice. Uh, Everybody thought I would see uh, Cyberpunk, which, so. which was a close second, but low fantasy. Aromatic yeah. or non-aromatic? Non-aromatic. Nice. Straight or curved pipe? Um, oh, man. Mm, uh, can I do, like, half bent? Yeah, I mean, if it's got a curve, it's curved, right? All right. Yeah. Get, get, get the fucking straight pipes out of here. They're not cool. Oh, I, I, I have I have more straight pipes. Oh, man, I'm a, I'm a curved man, pipes. just like my wiener. Just kidding. <laughs> I can't edit that out. That's what I say to Rich all the time. Like, yeah, I'll edit that out. Uh, Jazz or Exotica? Jazz. Game on your table right now? None. Uh, It's about to be Hood's Less Gamble. Thanks to Kyle. Thanks to Kyle. Uh, Gettysburg or Bulge? Fucking Gettysburg. I mean, neither (laughs) really, but Gettysburg. Uh, (coughs) uh, A smoky jazz bar or a tiki bar? Oh man! Yeah, I thought that might trip you up. And I imagine, I imagine oh. Smoky Jazz Bar like Smoky Pipe Jazz Bar. So Aaron and I fell in love in Smoky Jazz slash Blues Bar. So I'm going to say Smoky Jazz Bar. Nice. Okay. I th- I thought you'd go the other way for sure. Uh, yeah. So we 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 were friends and then started um, dating. Mm-hmm. Um, while we were going to, um, and Matt Allen knows this, this place, a bar called Chenu, um, that had a house 
band. They had two house bands. One was something blues. The other one was called uh, What You See Is What You Get, which um, in the drafting world is a WYSIWYG is a a term for, um, you know, anyway. Um, and it was, you know, they had like seven foot ceilings and the smoke nice. went down to about nice. four feet. Uh, rich, deep leather booths nice. and you know, small tables to sit at. And man, yeah. Can I get, yeah. I'm going to interject real here just for a quick story. Uh, I went to St. Louis a couple of years ago and uh, Mitch t- took me into the Scottish Circle, which has all these Scotch drinks. It was a fucking great time. We ate dinner there, and, and we fucking he he. Uh, I was like, oh, I'll just take an Uber back to my brother in law's place, which is behind the Chester Cat. Have you ever heard of the Chester Cat, Jason? It's a literary themed hotel oh. in St. Louis. It's pretty cool. Right? Okay, old school vibes. And he's like, oh man, I could eat. probably probably shouldn't have been. I, I guess Mitch probably holds his liquor better than me, but we probably should have Ubered. Anyways, we end up at the Chester Cat. We walk in, this bar's fucking tiny. I mean, it's it's the size of this room. And uh, this funny enough, this gal comes up behind me. And she's like, this place has the best Mai Tai I've ever had. Didn't have one at the time, but I had the fucking best brown ale, Civ Life brown ale I've ever had in my mm-hmm. life. Anyways, this fucking uh-huh. clarinet duo gets up there, tiny ass bar. Everyone's watching. Uh, it's uh, World Series time. The Cardinals are on. And this fucking clarinet duo gets up there and they just belt it, man. And it was fucking great. Nice. And uh, then I walked home yeah. to my brother-in-law's house. Was, listen, dude, I, and I told him, and he was poor as shit at the time. He was going to seminary school and uh, didn't have a job. And, like, like he was doing great. It's just God like bless. he was a poor college student all over again. I was like, dude, yeah. you got to go to the fucking Chester Cat. And it's fucking <laughs> tiny-ass bar, but they got a fucking jazz clarinet duo. Anyways, great great memory. Yeah. It showed me a really good time. That's good shit. Uh, yeah. Jazz bar, jazz bar is yeah, special. Yeah, sure, if they're good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, favorite favorite hobby outside of war gaming? Uh, nice. reading. Uh, sci fi or fantasy? Sci fi or nonfiction? Uh, see, um, now I'm nonfiction. Okay. I was I was on a hot high horse for a long time about you know the 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 societal benefits of fiction because <laughs> oh, I was a <laughs> fucking because you know. I, you know, I I was a writer. Um, I bet Jennifer enjoyed the yeah. societal benefits of fiction. Fuck me, yeah. So yeah, I I'm I'm on a nine not non nice. uh, so. Favorite military non-fic. topic to read about? Uh, Vietnam. Uh, what book is next to your bed or or your coffee table or whatever right now? I am reading uh, the the Donald biography of Abraham Lincoln, and I'm reading. Uh, Haruki Murakami's Norwegian oh. Wood. Uh, where do you read? Mostly in bed or on the couch. Last great book you read? Ooh, man, the Buchanan book I read just um, a couple months ago was mm. great. Um, that first Raven oh, Cycle fuck. book it was was, yeah. was great. It it was great. It it was one of those books that really caught me off guard. Um, Neon Leviathan by T.J. Napper was was great. Um, I think I think those three were the highlight of last right. year for me. Yeah, that uh, Maggie Steve Steve Otter. Yeah, those those Raven Cycle boys, Raven Cycle books, Raven Boys books are yeah, are so well, good. That, that'll yeah. be Raven it, Cycle it, off the table will be up. will be a thing. Uh, yeah. I, and I think I told you she did a swamp thing book, and it was pretty yeah, good. Yeah, um, it's in my it's in my nice. hoopla. Good, yeah. it, it's pretty good. I think uh, last bad book though. Ooh, can I can I pull up Goodreads? Sure. Yeah. My my memory is terrible. Um, I read a presidential biography recently that was like the writing was even bad. Let's see. Yeah, nothing's jumping out at me for a, for a lightning round situation. All right, we'll skip it. Uh, oh, you know what? Actually, um, Orphans of the Sky by um, Heinlein. I, I really did not like that book. All right. There was another... Yeah, Orphans of the Sky. Uh, and then uh, Perot, um, The Big Four hmm. by... Uh, I guess Agatha. That was, a, that was a Poro that missed, huh? Oh man, it, that 
it was so homophobic oh, and racist. Yeah. That, well, you know, you do like, know the I, original Tin Little Indians title, I, right? I'm like, there's, I, that's fine, that's fine, but for it to be a book yeah. about like everyone who's not white is awful, it what it 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 was too much for me. So yeah, big the big four by Agatha Christie and Orphans of the Sky by can we can Robert, we talk. Robert Heinlein. Can we talk about, uh, uh, yeah. do you know which one I'm talking about? The Agatha Christie book? Uh, the yeah, good yeah. one? What, what was that? Fuck. Oh, that not was... Mysterious, not Mysterious Affair at Styles. Um, fuck. Uh, uh, Roger yes. Ackroyd. Folks, let me, t- yes. let me tell you something about Roger Ackroyd. Do not do not go not. read anything. Just go read the fucking book. Yeah, just, yeah, just read it's it. It's fucking it's, great. And, yeah, it's five out of Serious Affair at Styles is fine, and then there were none is fine. Murder on the Orient Express still holds up, in my opinion. I, I actually like the book. Yeah, it's Murder good. of Roger Ackroyd. Go fucking read it, because... It's phenomenal. It's everything you want out of it. It'll really show you like where some modern authors got some ideas. All right. Uh, yeah. Do you reread books? Oh, hiccuping. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm there. Do you re- do you reread books? I do all the time. Yeah. Uh, Norwegian Wood actually is a reread. My wife this morning, I was reading it while I was drinking my coffee. And she said, oh, so you're in the mood for a good cry. <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm, it's that book. The first time I read it, she bought it for me. Just kind of I'm a I'm a huge Haruki Murakami fan. And so she bought it for me. Um, we were dating. I think we had just moved in together. She bought it for me. And I read it over the course of a weekend. And the last, like, 50 pages of that book, I was oh. weeping for the entire – I was, like, like not not like teary-eyed. I was, like – Yeah. <laughs> Have you read the storied life uh, of A.J. Fickery? No, okay, but I will. so here's the deal. Uh, my dad passed away in 2014, and I think I read that book in the fall of 2014. 2014 was the most momentous year of my life. I graduated from law school, got married, lost my dad. A million things fucking happened. Jesus yeah, it was, it was a it was a fucking wow. year. I stressed about the bar exam, all of those fucking things. And I'm not I'm not looking for a soap story here or anything. What I want to say is I read I read the storied life of AJ Fickery, and my wife was taking a nap to me, and I was just fucking hysterical. I like woke her up, and. Like, I didn't wake her up from my crying. I, like, shook her. I was like, I need to talk to someone right now because this is a fucking lot yeah. for me. Yeah. And uh, well, that's, like, when I pass that along family members and it's long gone. It probably passed through all of my aunts, my sister, and my mom, and I have no idea where it's ended up. Uh, great book. It's a quick read. It's about a guy that owns a bookstore. Fucking love it. But uh, I've, I've been there. I've, I've sobbed on a book. And this wasn't even, like, it wasn't even, like, it wasn't that it was for me it was just like oh it was it was so touching and so sad and all he wanted to do was love this person yeah it's okay to, it's so, okay to feel it sometimes yeah. uh well you answered the book i'm not great at i'm not great at feeling sometimes so i think yeah, i'm right there with you uh, Check what it, are you please. what are you playing next um i think I like answer. what's that new like yeah, just ne- like in general. What, what's, what's on the agenda? So next on the solo table will be, uh, like I said before, Hood's Last Gamble. Um, the Holland Spiel game? Yep, yep. And then I'm playing a GCACW at uh, DocuCon. Is that a thing? Are we doing that? I think so. All right, we got to lock that in. We're, we're playing so, Battle Him, don't forget. We're playing Battle Him. That's right. In a few that's right. Weeks. Yep. No, uh, that, that's exactly it. Yeah, Battle Him is what it is. You, you and me playing Battle Him. What are it's, what are you it's, reading? It's next? not laying right there. That yeah, yeah, yeah right, right. Yeah. What what are you reading next? Ooh, I am reading um, after Lincoln. I'm going to read, uh, and this is for Dave. He he won't he won't approve, but I'm going to read. Um, oh fuck! What's the big American Civil War book? Uh, battle cry uh, freedom. battle cry freedom yep that's what's next nice and nice, i'm gonna nice, read nice. um confederates in the attic and yeah. the the uh, uh stonewall stonewall jackson bio i have do you, do you own that already because i've i've do. got uh do you have a copy i've i've decided to get rid of it i've got, I've got a copy i haven't read it uh, uh you're talking about rebel rebel yell right 
Um, no, oh, okay. Stone Stonewall Sword, I think, oh. is is the one. I got Rebel Yell. Yeah. The the guy read the book. One of the books we did for uh, book club, and I'm just like, I don't, I don't think I want to like hear this guy. Anyways, right I'm back. not gonna fucking go there. <laughs> uh, what's what, right. let's get back yeah. to lightning round. Last series you binged on TV. Ooh, The Office, I guess. Oh, yeah. yeah, we tried to watch as much as we could before it, it left. Oh, we're still we're we uh, <laughs> so. My wife did a lot of research into where, you know, what is the best platform for us to buy the office. So we settled on Vudu. So we're we're why nice. we're all. I mean, yeah, we're we're on season four already on Vudu. Very good. Uh, favorite superhero? Oh, I didn't expect this. Um, Green Lantern. Nice. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Uh, have you read uh, uh, Omega Men? Okay. Yes. Oh, the, well, I'm talking about the new series, not the old '70s series. No. It's fucking amazing. It's it's basically a uh, a parallel story to basically like terrorist action in Afghanistan, set in like a a completely standalone Green Lantern universe. It's fucking one of the best things I've read over the last okay. ten years. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, Green Lantern is my DC guy. Um, Wolverine was my Marvel guy for a long time until Matt ruined it, and then and now it's dupe. dupe. I like dupe right. on the yeah. Marvel. Uh, rum or rum yeah. or tequila? Uh, rum. rum or gin? Gin. Beer or wine? Wine. E reader or print? Print. Punk or Exotica? Punk. Marvel or DC? Marvel. Best movie you watched? Ooh, Jesus Christ. Um, John Wake 3? Marvel or DC? I already said that. You already said Cyberpunk that. or Sword and Sorcery? Cyberpunk. Uh, ballpoint or Fountain Pen? Fountain Pen. Jesus Christ. I, how I dare know. you? All right, well, was, you got to throw some curveballs out there. Um, let's say you're starting a new fantasy RPG. What class do you pick? Uh, cleric. Alien or aliens? <sighs> Alien. Pacific or Band of Brothers? Pacific all the way. Favorite Euro game? Uh, Power Grid. Nice. Favorite card game? Like traditional card game? However you interpret it. Uh, spades. I fucking, fuck, man. I play Spades before... Pi- I was playing it <laughs> once a week before COVID. No shit. I, like... So- I, yeah, I was in the army for a long time, and we would play when we were in the field. Uh, we would play either dominoes or spades, and I was a cook. So <laughs> nice, Kyle. Um, I, my squad was our squad leader was a white guy. Everyone else except me was was black. Um, so it was seventy five seventy five percent male, twenty five percent female, um, and then me this this white guy from idaho um and i could throw down with spades and dominoes with the best of them because my my best friend in high school his his dad was from belize is from belize um so uh, i grew up with him and going uh in the summers to south central la to stay with his grandma for a couple weeks uh, and playing dominoes with all of his cousins. So I learned how to play yeah. dominoes and spades with the best of them. And so it's, yeah. Nice. Uh, scotch or bourbon? Bourbon. C- cigar or pipe? Pipe. Match or lighter? Oh, Jesus. Um, I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> um, I'll say lighter. All right. Uh, Star Wars or Star Trek? Star R- Wars, all the RPGs way. RPGs or war games? RPGs. Wow. Music or movies? Ooh, that cuts too deep. <sighs> um, you know, these days I'm going to say music. Nice. Books or games? Books. World War Two or U.S. Civil War? Civil War. Napoleon or MacArthur? MacArthur. <laughs> who's who's Napoleon? <laughs> Best series. And that's that's all you're that's giving all me. Giving. Oh. Ooh. 
Um, hmm. Dayline. Best podcast. Advanced Retro Combat. Uh, there we go. All right, I'm going to scroll up for uh, for listener questions here, and then we'll, we'll wrap this baby up. Uh, we're going to start with Uncle John, who asked, um, what are your recommendation, recommended beginner make-at-home tiki drink? Um, just knowing the, the listener group we have, I'm going to say a Jungle Bird because it's pineapple juice and uh, Kimbari. You know, and some other things. A Mai Tai is good. The, say, the, the one tricky thing with the Mai Tai is an orgy or J, whatever. So, a painkiller? Yeah, that's good. There's one. a lot of recipes for painkillers. Um, but if you go um, 2211 with a painkiller, you can't go wrong. So, two rum, any rum, seriously, any rum, um, and two ounces of pineapple juice, one ounce of orange juice, and one ounce of coconut cream. You top it with some fresh ground nutmeg. You you can't go wrong. Um, the the recipe we use is a little bit different, but if you do two two one one for a painkiller, it's you, you get that kind of okay. This is what rum is more than a rum and coke um, to kind of see if you're even interested beyond. Matt's right. I mean, a mai tai is 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 fantastic. Also, I mean, a, a corn oil, yeah, right? If that's a good one. you buy either something like um, like Matt, a uh, uh, plantation traditional dark, or the um, Cruzan Blackstrap, which is like eighteen bucks, and a bottle of Falernum, Falernum, which is like eighteen twenty bucks. <clears throat> You have bitters already. You put a squeeze of lime juice in there, corn oil. Um, I mean, yeah, you can't go wrong. Nice. Uh, Uncle John asks, does a mojito made with fresh picked mint from my yard count? Hell yeah, man. It's all about the mindset. Yes. Oh, yeah. I forgot about the mojito. Mojitos are, yeah. Fuck I mean, yeah. that's maybe not technically tiki, but I mean, that's tiki as fuck. Yeah. Sure. I mean, you throw some rum, some mint, some lime, like, yeah, yeah get into it, it. Make it your own. Light a fucking fire, yeah. whether it's a tiki torch or a fucking bonfire pit, whatever, man. I, I It's all about that mindset, Propane baby. Fire. Yeah. Yeah. Escape. Um, <laughs> well, uh, there's some comments here, but uh, that that may that may be Uncle John may be the only one that asked the question. Uh, that's, that's okay though. Um, Derek, this is where you come for a fourteen dollar drink because yeah, sure, tiki drinks are expensive, yeah. but uh, there's that's some how we ingredients do. in there. Um, all right. If there's no other questions, uh, closing thoughts, Jason. Like, what what do you want to say before uh, we tune off for the night? This was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, it was. It was a great time. Uh, Sorry for the techno yeah. technology difficulties, guys. I really am. No, no worries. No. Um, I'm looking forward to do, doing more. I mean, yeah, let's let's get into Rave, Raven Cycle. Let's get into Coheed. Let's get into fucking Green Lantern and Swamp Thing and whatever oh, else. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Right. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, real quick, before before you guys sign off, uh, do me a huge favor. Um, hit the subscribe button. I'm not not for any other reason other than I just want <laughs> the, the uh, custo- customizable uh, YouTube URL, and I need 100 subscribers for that. And, uh, oh, yeah. I've got, um, I'm subscribed yeah, already. Yeah, I've so. got a lot, a ton of people already subscribed today and that's great. Uh, we've got a great group of people here. Uh, and that's awesome. Uh, as far, as far as Tiki goes, I think just like kick back and enjoy it. Yeah. Go listen to that retro yeah. cock tower. Go listen to that playlist. Find it, spend your own records. Um, there's a ton of fucking great exotic drinks around. So just do your fucking yeah. thing. Get get drunk and hate it the next day. Oh yeah, tomorrow tomorrow will be rough. I am I'm very it, good. It's gonna suck. That's all right. Good. Uh well thank you very much for your time. Yeah, uh, this this was fun. Let Matt. me for all of you in here, please go check out Jason's Kickstarter. I've played in the game. Uh it's gonna be well yeah. worth the the best scene to, to back this zine quest. It's actually the only zine quest I mean, sign. I'm going on an austerity in February. Look at that public domain art. It's fucking great, boys. Yeah, it's it's a good game. Hey, I'm I'm critical of RPGs, but it's it's easy enough to j- just kind of play. Um, you know, that doesn't remind me. We have to get back to hockey goons. We should, yeah. 
What are some alternative yeah, that... tiki streams we can listen to? Um, yeah, there's there's advance after tiki. Um, there was there's <laughs> there's was it's coming in the there fall. was rally in the tiki bar, but they've decided to close up. Um, and then if, if you're really interested, I think um, um, mugs, uh, rice, <laughs> and butter <laughs> syrup, but they haven't recorded for the last uh, three years, so uh, you're kind of stuck with us. That's good shit. All right. Uh, that's going to do it. Thank you so much for everyone yeah. for checking out the yeah, first thank stream. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for your time, Jason. Yeah. Thanks for everyone who asked questions oh, and commented. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Love that's it. That's going to do it. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, guys.